While working as a park ranger, there was one thing that always stood out to me as being particularly bizarre. Now, I'd like to say that this story started out in a beautiful summer's day, but it didn't. It started when rain was falling heavily, and I didn't really want to be at work to be honest. I had some other things going on that I really needed to take care of, and I was kind of getting fed up with waiting for some people to do things that they weren't. So yeah, it wasn't great, I kind of just wanted to get home and do other things and just take my mind off everything, because I found being trapped at work would make it worse. And also, I had to go and survey an area which I really didn't want to do, just because the weather was so bad mostly, but hey, it was my job to do it. So I head out and I make it a little way off the path before I eventually have to go into the forest. Now this was pretty close to winter time and there weren't that many leaves on the trees so that was probably a good thing. It meant I could move through the trees but they're on the floor now, all of the leaves I mean, and it kind of made your shoes get quite grubby and it was, I don't know, just not really nice with the slushing and the dampness of everything. I had my umbrella though so I wasn't too bothered but it also made going through the trees quite difficult because I couldn't really make it through too many without having to put it down a bit and I was worried this thing was going to break. Now I eventually make it up into a clearing and I can see a lake which isn't far from where we're based. I decide that I'm going to walk up to the lake and just relax for a bit because I don't know. I haven't really got a time scale for what I'm doing and I want to enjoy myself and try and clear my mind a bit. So I eventually make it over to the lake and it's very misty and I can't really see too far across it. It wasn't too bad. I slowly felt my mind starting to cool down a bit and I started to relax and feel good again. I mean heck I almost forgot why I was angry and this was really nice. We even have a small pier which I can walk on and that's what I do. I go right up to the edge of the lake and have a really nice look around and just enjoy myself. I don't do this for too long and I continue on my journey. Now the rain still picked up and there's actually a couple of downed trees around, a small path which I'm near once again. This path hasn't been used for years and actually isn't available to the public. It's one that we needed to clear off and something that we're still doing today, but it made my walking easier. I was pretty surprised the trees were down because these were big trees and I didn't see anything that could have made them go like this. I did think maybe it was lightning but I had second thoughts because there wasn't any signs of a lightning strike. I wasn't much further from the area that I needed to survey now so I started to feel a bit better again. I think maybe being outside for long enough actually made my mind flip the other way and I was feeling quite happy. I continue on this path and I'm following a small stream next to me and there's not so many leaves on the ground here which is actually quite nice. I know my shoes are recovering. Now at one point I have to jump over a stream but luckily I make it. There was a few downed trees around here and actually too many to be considered normal but I decide I'm not going to try and cross on one. Plus everyone would make fun of me if I'd fallen in and come back all soaked. Now, as I've just got over this small stream, I come into another part of the woods, which has fewer trees now, so makes for nicer walking. And that's when I notice something odd. I can see a large person walking in the distance. Now, this person was very tall. I mean, way over six feet tall, but I can't really see much else about them. They seemed to be wearing relatively dark clothing, but I don't know, they were just moving kind of weird, not like how a normal person would walk. I call out and don't get a reply. I do it again shouting that I'm a ranger here and say you've got to be careful because of the trees are falling down. And they don't say anything but they seem to notice me. Now they do act almost suspicious and I decide that I'm going to follow them. They kind of dart through the trees quickly and I think this is odd. Worried that they've done something wrong, I decide that I'm just going to keep a distance and try and trail them. Now I had to walk for a good 5 minutes to get up to where they were before and I realised something odd, there is a really bad smell. I actually start to worry that it might be a body here and suddenly my mind starts racing. 
Something is definitely off here. It's almost like the scene from a horror film when the victim discovers a body, then becoming a victim themselves. I keep my guard with me, and am very cautious. I call out again hey, deciding that they know where I am already so I better find them quick. And this time, I met with something very bizarre. It's a screech slash scream that I've never heard so loud before. It almost sounds animalistic, and it kind of reverberates through my entire body. Not sure whether somebody's really hurt and maybe has a loud voice, I decide to pursue again. I run a little bit further and eventually catch sight of this person again, quickly darting through the trees once more. They seem to be moving extremely quick, especially considering I've been trained to go in areas like this and move fast anyway. They seem almost like a level above me, and the smell's really bad here. I'm not sure whether they're carrying another body on them or something is that bad. And as I'm running, I notice something. Something hits my arm, and it really hurts, like badly. I look down and see that a large rock has been thrown at me. But how? This thing was almost like a bowling ball and I'm lucky this just grazed my arm. Not really sure where it's come from, I think maybe this person had set a booby trap in the tree for me and I trail back again. I can see something else coming over the hill and it's another one. Again, roughly the size of a bowling ball and I just think how is anybody throwing these? They must be up in the trees. So I now go diagonal to where I am. I'm looking up at the trees constantly, but weirdly I can't see anything at all. That's when another one falls not far from me. I decide that I have to sprint now because these are getting more accurate, and I sprint as fast as I possibly can. I make it towards a corner and I hear a very loud thud on the ground. I stop in my tracks thinking there's going to be another body, and I slowly peer around the corner, and to my disbelief, a huge boulder is now laying in the middle of the path that I was following. I knew for a fact it wasn't there before, because one of the other rangers had been out surveying this area a few days previously, so that was really weird. I now realise that something's very off. I slowly make my way up the hill and look down and that's when I spotted it. I locked eyes with this thing for only a couple of seconds, but those seconds felt like an eternity, and it's forever been merged into my mind, almost more stronger than anything else from my life. I was staring dead in the eyes of some creature which is probably eight feet tall, covered in hair, that has sharp, jagged teeth, and very dark eyes. And when I looked at this thing, it didn't look that scared of me. It continues off, and I just watch it slowly vanish into the distance. Now I felt like my soul had definitely left my body in those brief seconds I was watching it vanish, fading away into the distance far too quickly to be any human. I now realise that what I had just seen is something that not many people have ever seen in their lifetime, or that not many people would even consider to be there. I quickly start heading back in the opposite direction. I check the boulders there again, which it is, just making sure that this isn't all happening inside my brain. I eventually make it back past the surveying area, and I get further away from the smell which slowly vanishes. I eventually make it all the way back to the station and report in my surveying, and I just sit there in my chair not knowing what to think. Thinking back on it now, the only logical thing I can think is some kind of skinwalker or something like that. I know there's no way it is a person in a suit because this was moving far too quickly, but I really don't know what I saw. I don't want to say it was Bigfoot, but I know it wasn't any bears, but what could this thing have been? So I dated somebody who owned a Cavadir dog. Basically, they can find dead bodies. Anyway, 
They explained that they work with rescue teams. We live in wilderness country. The dog's job was to sniff out bodies for people who might have got lost or potentially passed away, under avalanches, etc. After five months of now dating my ex, I asked if I could house slash dog sit. Was more than happy to. Great dog. Would be great dog sitting for a couple of weeks while they visit family. Now, I was warned that it has happened on hikes before that the dog picks up the scent of a corpse and gave me steps to follow if this happens. The first couple of days are uneventful and the dog goes dragging me down this trowel and I'm panicking thinking, oh no, what am I going to see? But the dog stops at this very stern woman, just sauntering along. He keeps looking back and forth between me and the woman. She gives me a quick, your dog isn't well trained. I then drag the dog away. It happens with this woman a few more times, so I call the owner to bring it up. I describe the woman, and my ex is shocked and confused, not familiar with the woman. Fast forward to my last night of dog sitting. I was going to bed and had this horrific nightmare about being held down by her. I hear a bark and wake up, and the dog is standing next to me at the bed in an alert position, staring at the end of it. I never got an answer to this. I was 12 or so at the time, and some friends of mine were in the Girl Scouts and invited me to join them for a sleepover at the Tuberculosis Sanitarium in Marlin, just north of San Francisco. At this time, 50 years ago now, the building wasn't in the best of condition. There was an old caretaker's cabin and some old outbuildings. My best friend and I wandered around there first day, Saturday and well, we were not the best behaved little monsters. In spite of the locked door, we crawl through a window into the caretaker's cabin and explore it. My friend went upstairs and I stayed downstairs as a sentry. Already nervous, I was even more jumpy when I heard somebody coming down the stairs, but it wasn't my girlfriend. There was no one there, at least visibly. Fast forward to that evening, in an attempt to go to sleep, we were overtaken by giggles. Hey, we're little girls, and one of the counsellors separates us so the other girls can sleep. I was placed in the bed in this sunroom. It was an enclosed room but with windows on three walls. The wall I was facing is one with some French doors and a balcony. Now, early before anyone else was up, I've watched a woman in an old-fashioned dress and parasol walk across the balcony and descend down the stairs. I just figure it as one of the counsellors and roll over to go back to sleep. Later in the morning, after getting up and dressed, my friends and I explored the balcony, and there were no stairs. Strange. We all explored the old wooden acreage all around the old sanitarium, and off we all went back home. It was only a few years ago I did some researching and learned that many had seen apparitions there at this facility. So I wasn't really just imagining things after all. One day on shift as a park ranger, we had something bizarre happen. We were following a trowel and every so often, we would find a doll's head. Literally just a decapitated doll's head with the hair half cut and a scary smiley face to ex Sean with what appeared to be a red pen. This is extremely bizarre. We've never really encountered anything like this, and they seem to be going off in a particular direction. We follow these, and we literally collect about six of them, all about ten feet apart or so, until eventually we find what has to be about a hundred or so of them all scattered around in a big circle in the middle of the wilderness. We still to this day have no idea how they got there or what they were there for. Now, this is a quick story from when I was growing up in Northern Kentucky in the 90s. I would have been right around 10, maybe a little older. I'm in my 30s now, but I vividly remember this happening, and I still think about it all the time. 
My best friend lived with his grandparents for a bit on several acres of land in Walton, KY, and I spent almost every weekend there. They never really did much with the land. It remained relatively cleared, but there was no farms or structures on it. They had a horse stable near the house, but that was it. My friend had received a go-kart for his birthday, so we were driving around on it on the open land. It was just the two of us and we're having a blast on this thing. It was getting closer to dusk and we knew that we're gonna have to pack it in pretty soon. So we come to a stop now and cut the engine. And almost at the same time, both of us have a weird feeling coming over us. We felt like we're being watched by something. It's weird how our lizard brains can still process things like this, but we both agreed that the feeling is overbearing. We hadn't heard his grandpa's truck, and we were too far out to be seen from the house, so we start looking around. We're in an open field in the middle of their land, and it was surrounded by tall trees, but something caught my eye, and I told my friend to look there. Over in the brush, we could see a long, almost black shape, which is very still. I know at this point in the story, most of you are thinking Bigfoot, but I can remember that this thing was dead silent. Even now, I sometimes wonder if it was something else that we saw, but I remembered thinking we'd seen a giant black wolf. I would guess it was maybe 200 feet away from us. It was perfectly still though, and to me looks almost furry. I couldn't make out any features like eyes or ears, but I swear this thing was watching us. Almost as though it's ready to pounce and you kind of feel that fear taking over. We were both getting really spooked out at this point and the sun was getting down behind the tree line and one of us was going to have to jump up and pull back the engine to start it. We were whispering about what we should do and why is it watching us. Honestly, forgot exactly which one of us it was but one of us jumped out and started up the cart but when we looked back at where the shape was it was gone. The go-kart didn't have lights as we drove, so we have to be careful and get back as quick as we can. We tell his grandpa and he said that it was probably a coyote or bear, or boar. But this shape was long and I don't know, coyote just doesn't sit well in my head for this. Even a few years after I tell this story and think about it now, I've always read that there's no wolves in Kentucky anymore. I think I'm just convinced that it couldn't have been a coyote, but nothing else seems to make sense of what this possibly could have been. And nothing else ever happened on his grandpa's land aside from a bad car accident a few years later and some missing chickens. And every once in a while, the horses get really riled up at night. Now we would go camping on the land and go fishing there a lot for fun. But yeah, I still don't really know what to think of this experience. Now this one's relatively short, but I want to share this. So my boyfriend and I had been dating almost a month back at this point in 2020. It was last October, almost Halloween. I wanted to do some fun nighttime nature walking and my aunt told me about this cool unknown grave off Lake Erie, which is a nature park. So we go there and get lost and neither of us really have good reception, but we had a lot of fun. We stayed on the trails so we weren't lost lost and we could get back to the parking lot but just lost enough for it to be the creepy fun kind that we were looking for. We found the grave and took some videos and pictures and had a short break and saw that the lake was less than 10 yards away from us but we're still at the top of the cliff so we decided to follow the trails further out along the lake until we found a trail spot that took us to a little secluded beach. It was about 9pm, but it was October so it was already really dark out. It was partly cloudy, but the slight amount of stars lit up the lake in a way that was beautiful. So we sat on a log and looked out and chatted for a bit. After about 15 minutes of just sitting, looking and relaxing, we both then see a flash of light that comes from behind us. I should tell you that unlike most stories like this, the kind with two early young 20 adults wandering the woods, there was no drugs or alcohol involved, but 
We both see this flash and instantly freeze and look at each other and ask if we both saw it. We turned on our flashlights and turned around to see where it comes from. It looked as though it was a really bright camera flash but there was no one there. We hadn't seen or heard anybody else on the entire time that we're there. And it had been about two hours I think. We even checked around the trail cams in the area and can't find anything. So we both grab large sticks from the beach and start walking down the trail trying to get back to the car. We didn't take the same trail back, which was kind of lucky, judgement on our parts because the one we took was actually the fastest way to get there, but the whole way back we kept seeing eyes in the woods around us. They were just like deers and coyotes and other things but it still freaked us out. We made it back to the car without incident and then went home okay but we came during daylight a few days later and looked around the trail cams thinking maybe we missed something because of how dark it is but we can't find anything and we still don't know what the flash was to this day. Now this happened about 20 years ago while hunting with my dad in northern BC. It was a cold October morning and it was still dark when we parked the truck and started our hike into a clear cut. I was familiar with the area as we had moose hunted there before. My dad left and I went right and I made my way to the top of the slope to get a better view of the clear cut. I found a stump to sit on and took my brother's binoculars and quickly found my dad in the clear cart across the mountain. As soon as I spotted him, I heard something heavy moving behind me in the forest roughly 40 yards away. Yes, a moose, I think. I then head towards the edge of the forest and I hear screaming and screeching like I've never heard before. It did not sound human and wasn't like any animal I've ever heard. It was so loud that I swear my soul left my body for a few moments. I turned around and ran down the clear cut hill as fast as my teenage legs would allow me to go. When I got to my dad and he said that he heard it too, he finds the binoculars and also tries to see it. We then look up the edge of the forest and saw a big hairy human like creature which is about 8 feet tall between the trees. It stayed there for a few seconds and then turns around. We got in the truck and went home calling it a day. We asked elders and relatives about it when we got back and apparently it's a forest guardian and it scares the heck out of me. Now, my father and I were taking a quick hike a few miles north of Butte, Montana. It was not absolute wilderness, that far out of boot, but a few miles outside of most towns in Montana, meaning you're way out in the backwoods. Now it wasn't an unusual day by any means, just a warm summer afternoon, perfect for a little hike. We were only a mile or so away from where we parked when we saw a large trash bag along the trail. I hate litter bugs, especially in the woods. I intended to haul it back up and dispose of it correctly, and when I attempted to lift the bag though it was heavy, which is much more than I anticipated it to be. Curiosity gets the better of my father and me, and we split the bag open to see what's inside. I think it's going to be a dead animal, but it's not totally unusual for someone to dispose of a dead dog or cat in a similar fashion in this part of the world. Some people out here will poach deers and leave trimmings like this too. Upon opening the bag, we see a boot, then sock, and then pants. We suddenly realise they're all attached to somebody's legs. It looks so unreal, like a movie prop, like somebody took it off and threw them in the bag, like a prank, how? It wasn't. I fell backwards and started having a panic attack. Nothing prepares you for something like that. My dad on the other hand sprung into action, he immediately closes up the bag as best he can and then we start surveying the surroundings. That freaks me out more, though my gasp comes out. I ask him, what are you looking for and he said somebody could be watching us. Can you imagine stumbling upon a serial killer dump site and they're watching you? Didn't really help my panic. As I tried to calm down, my dad called the Silver Bow County Sheriff and reported what we found. 
Limp-legged, we hiked back a mile or so to the road and waited for the cops to show up. The authorities searched the area with their dogs and never found any other pieces or even a trail to follow. The sheriff's people even searched our truck and interviewed us to see if we've been responsible, but nothing ever comes out of the incident. It's been just over 10 years now, and nobody has any idea who these belong to. No missing person reports match up, and the DNA's never showed up on a database. Montana has a reputation for being a bit on the rough side, so it's not impossible. This was a local who ran into trouble. But I don't know, it's just a crazy thing that happened. My parents live in a wooded part of Northern Carolina, in an old mining town. We have about three or four abandoned mine shafts near us. Frankly, they've been used to dump old things or dead rattlesnakes to prevent the dogs from eating them. I know, gross, but yeah. Now my parents have a fifth wheel trailer they parked in the front part of the yard, and I stay in it when I visit. I'm Native American, so I know when there's weird stuff out there. But this night, I slept with the windows open anyway because it's pretty warm. There's a mine shaft maybe a hundred yards away on the property across the road. That's one of the windows is facing. Now I started hearing a moan or howling sound coming from that direction. I grew up out there so I blew it off as a coyote or bobcat. But it sounded more human. Almost like somebody's hurt really. I remember clutching my medicine ouch around my neck and just feeling unsafe. I peeked out the window and there was an orange slash yellow glow coming from inside the mine shaft. It faces upwards at around a 45 degree angle. Now within an instant, my instincts are screaming no time to go. My mom's dog was on the side of the bed shaking but completely silent. I scooped her up, crouched around the bed until I got to the door. I swung it open and booked it to the house and thank god the front door was unlocked. I made it a bit of a commotion when I came in so my dad came running out of the bed with his gun. I told him what I saw and how the dog was terrified. At this point she pointed herself in a corner and was slightly moaning. My dad peeked out of the window and literally said that's something we should leave alone and I don't like it. Now, my dad is one of those people who's very serious and doesn't believe in supernatural stuff, but he was genuinely scared. I slept on the floor in his room that night when I was a kid and heard that noise all night. At one point, there was tapping on the sliding glass window, but none of the dogs made a peep. They looked in that direction, but didn't make a sound, which is very unlike them. I work as the equivalent of a park ranger, but not in North America. This is a job that my father had done and is something that I truly enjoyed. I felt quite honoured to be able to do this really, and not that many people where I'm from get to do it. One thing that always gave me the spooks however was growing up and hearing different stories about the folklore where I live. There were some really eerie ones and I guess they kind of stick with you in a way. I'd hear about little gremlin types of creatures and other things similar to that and it could really give me the spooks while I was on the job. Now, while working on the job, there wasn't too many strange things that happened to me. However, there was one thing I'd like to share from my childhood. Now, where I lived, there wasn't really too much to do so it was normal for all of the kids to go around and just go on adventures and hike generally. Having grown up in the area, we didn't have too much of a problem with this and we had quite good knowledge between us to be honest, despite us being young. So for many days we would just explore the woods and play games out there. Now one thing we liked to do was go exploring around some caves that are in the area. Now I know it's not really a good idea now thinking back on it, but at the time it was great fun. And there was one particular cave that was supposed to be haunted and it's something that all of us wanted to explore really. So a group of us all set out one day in the rain and go to find this cave. Now it wasn't too easy to find and the trek there was pretty long to be honest. 
we made it off the normal path and onto much smaller ones. Now there were a few benches and things around on the first part of our journey because this is more of a trail area, but where we're going is a lot deeper. There's some markings on trees and rocks of where you're supposed to go and we basically go straight past this. None of us really had good shoes for the weather or clothes for that matter, but that was just how it was. There's some really nice streams that we walked past too and I found it a pretty great walk to be honest. All of us are just playing games with each other, daring each other to go first when we find the cave. I wasn't necessarily the bravest of the group, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to volunteer myself because why not? I don't actually think this thing is haunted and I'm convinced that my friends are just messing with me. However, I didn't really want to be out during nightfall because I've heard lots and lots and lots and lots of tales about the creatures that could get me and even now I still believe in some of them. So yeah, it starts to get dark pretty quick, but that's just because we didn't get to the cave initially. We also didn't have any torches or anything, but there's still enough daylight to see where we are. And we're in a deeper part of the woods now, so that's kind of stopping some of the light from piercing through. And all we're getting is some rain dropping on us anyway at this point. Now, after a good probably 40 minutes walking, we eventually come across a cave and it looks pretty creepy. There's actually some other kids already there and they tell us not to go in because it's haunted. And we just joke back with them and eventually they wander off. All of them had left. Now, we all stand around nervous about who should go into the cave first, but I volunteer myself because like I said, I don't actually think it's haunted and I think they're just messing around with me. I end up getting pushed to go in on my own, which actually annoyed me a bit because I thought I'd at least have some company with me, but there's no one. So I take my first few steps in and look around. There's not really too much to see, and I think this is going to be boring. But feeling brave by the monotony, I press on. I ended up going quite far into the cave and I can hear my friend's voices echoing in the background. I ignore this and sit on a rock. I think I'm going to make them jump and I'm actually quite excited to do so. That's when I can hear my friends whispering to me. I can't really figure out what they're saying at first but it sounds like lots of people whispering or rubbing on the sides of the cave. I start laughing but stop myself, wanting them to come in to investigate then scare them. That's when I notice something. I have a feeling that there's a presence to my right and it almost feels like that side of my body's slightly warmer than usual. I don't know, it's almost like a sensation rather than something that I see and I slowly turn my head to investigate and I can see something staring back at me. Now I don't know how to describe this but it's almost like a tall dark creature standing on pinned legs with really long arms just staring at me and there's almost a strange glow coming from near its eyes. It doesn't seem to have a nose or mouth, it's just like a tall black creature almost, where light doesn't seem to pierce it and strangely I can see around it but not through it. Now for a long while I thought this was one of the other groups that we'd seen earlier and one of them was just playing around with me so I don't actually care too much. I say hey. What are you doing? And then say, are you ready to scare these kids? And there's no reply. I glance my head back quickly just to see if some of the others are going to come in and I want to make them jump. And probably within half a second I glance back and the thing's completely gone. Bewildered, I stare for a while and let my eyes adjust to the darkness and it's reappeared almost at the very end of the cave and that's when I realised something's very wrong. Why is it glowing? This isn't a person and I start to scream. To be honest my screams were so scary sounding that I wouldn't be confused if that thing had run too. I start running as fast as my little legs can take me out of the cave and I realise that all of my friends are there waiting for me. They scream too and we all run off, initially in different directions until eventually regroup and not much later. I start describing what had happened and one of my friends says that this is common in our folklore and it's a creature that I haven't actually heard of before. 
The way they describe it is a very tall creature which is maybe six or seven feet tall which can just stare at you in the night and apparently comes to get your soul. Now I don't know about that part but the way he describes it with glowing eyes is basically exactly what I saw and I don't need to hear any more. I sprint and sprint and sprint until eventually we get back to roughly where our houses are and break off and I didn't dare tell my mum about what had happened because she would have beat me for disobeying her and doing something so dangerous. But even when I'm writing this story, I still have to think to myself, what on earth did I see in that cave that day? I don't think I'll ever know, and I don't want to. I'm currently a park ranger, and I'd like to share a weird experience that I had before. Now during these kinds of jobs you'll see lots of weird things that you're not necessarily sure about, but luckily because you work with other colleagues you can always radio in to get more support if you need it and often get to the bottom of things. Some of the other guys who I'd been working with for a while had told me about a cabin that you should never go to. Apparently it was ancient from a hunter or somebody like that, and they lived there for a long time kind of off the grid and there'd been some rumours from everybody saying that it was haunted. It's something that I never really believed to be honest, but apparently, sometimes at night if you heard whistling, that was where it was coming from. Now, I kind of believed them a little bit, but not really, especially because they always like to play tricks on each other and things like that, but it did put me a little bit off ever going there, I wasn't exactly sure how to get there in the first place so I didn't really have to worry too much. And there was a couple of other old buildings dotted around and sometimes whenever I encountered them I would stop and stay as still as I could and try and listen. Because apparently you had to wait for 30 seconds before he would whistle at you. But it never really happened to me. So I didn't really believe it was haunted or any of that or that I'd at least found the right one. So there was one particular stretch of season that I was on my station. It was a really nice time in the summer and to be honest it was a little bit annoying because of the creatures outside. I'm talking about the bugs and things. Now you couldn't really step foot outside without immediately getting swarmed by them but it's something you grow used to with spray and there's random little things you could do to try and stop them coming. So. On one of my days here, I had reports of hikers who got lost, and apparently there was two people that got lost with an old man. They were described as wearing two blue jackets and the other person was wearing a darker colour, kind of like a beige or green almost. So I headed out into their relative vicinity to try and locate them. We weren't exactly sure where they were, but there was reports off of other hikers saying that these people looked pretty confused and almost a bit worried. With this in mind, I thought that I should bring lots of water because they're probably dehydrated by now. A lot of people like to go out hiking and don't necessarily bring enough water with them. They think it's okay to leave it in their car and just go and retrieve it again later, but I can tell you that's not really a smart idea. The amount of times I find people that are really struggling with dehydration and are actually about to go into a dangerous state of it because they haven't got water with them. Especially too, a lot of people wear too many clothes when they go hiking and they become far too hot. People aren't willing to abandon their clothes on the way in terms of jackets and things so they just wear it and get too hot. I mean, for myself even, one day I remembered getting far too hot and I was basically looking for somebody in a similar situation to this but I started jogging when I found them with my jacket on and by the end of it I could see weird colours where my vision started to fade and when I stopped I felt like I was gonna faint. So yeah, lots of water with me and not too many clothes as I set out. Now it didn't take me long to find them and they were both just sitting under a tree. It was a little bit odd, and I radioed in that I found them and I was going to make sure they are okay. I waved to them, 
and stood up shaking the bottle saying, hey, I'm here. Doing a smile one wave, but they didn't do anything back. I thought this was relatively weird and I'm a little bit cautious now. I think maybe they're really in trouble or maybe it's something more sinister and I slowly approach. Now I've got to go and check if these guys are okay, but I'm actually a little bit paranoid myself. I eventually make my way over to them and it looks like they're both in shock. It's really weird. I give them water which luckily they accept and I say can you tell me what's happened? Are either of you injured? And I look over them looking for any signs of head trauma. You only have to look for simple things like cuts or bruises but it can really be a telling sign. The problem you get is when somebody's got long hair or something and isn't bleeding and you don't know whether they're damaged. You can get an increase of intracranial pressure due to bleeding which can be extremely dangerous because obviously the brain's contained in the skull so the pressure doesn't have anywhere to go and it can potentially take your life. Worried that maybe one of them was hurt like this, I ask again what's wrong and they say, finally, thank god you're here. And they don't say much, they both stand up and start walking over to me. I stand up too and say come on let's get out of here and we start heading back towards the station. While we're walking, I don't make too much conversation because obviously these people aren't really in a good way and I don't want to bombard them with questions right now. But I go over some basic medical checks and they seem fine just like they're in shock. It was only when we started getting a lot closer to the station that one of them opened up. We saw a ghost. I'm not kidding man, we literally saw somebody who kind of looked like you. We thought he was a ranger and went to see what was wrong. And he literally just vanished in through a tree. I'm not kidding man, we both saw it. He then pauses and starts explaining some more. Apparently they looked all around for this guy but there was no sign of him. They were convinced they'd seen a ghost and didn't know what to think of it. I asked them how long they'd seen him for and they said I don't know, maybe like a minute or so. They then explained that some other hikers come but they were too shocked to say anything and just sat by the tree in the shade. They said apparently at the start, this apparition whatever you want to call it waved them over smiled then just disappeared into a tree they said it's like nothing they've ever seen before and neither of them have a medical history of things like this i quickly write the report and one of my colleagues hands over and i didn't get to know much else as i have to head back out again but it really played on my mind i mean they were probably quite dehydrated but they didn't seem to have any medical issues which was odd I kind of just chalked it up to probably they were just imagining it, and maybe it was just an animal that slowly went off a tree they didn't see too well, but it was specifically a bizarre thing that I've always remembered. I never really encountered too many things like that while I was out there before, so it definitely stuck with me, but I was glad that I'd done my job and they were completely fine. Now. Worried that there was some kind of person out there that might also need help, I decide that I should probably go and have a look in the area. Based off the slim slim chance that somebody was actually there, I had to investigate it. There's a couple of other guys who are going to investigate things within the vicinity to them, but this was proximal to me and I know the exact spot so of course I had to go there again. Now the walk was just as pleasant as before and I started to slam my own water, worried that I was going to become dehydrated myself. I was actually quite tired from carrying so much and the trek to these guys and back again. I didn't really understand the area they were in because they were well off of a path and they would have had to just walk idly through the trees for probably a good 20 minutes to get there. Which, if you're familiar with national parks or big forests, is not really a good idea because that's how you get lost and how big search parties have to go out and people put their lives in danger to try and find them. So yeah, that didn't really add up. Now, like I said, the sun was beautiful and I was really enjoying the walk to be honest. There was just enough light piercing through the treescape so I'd feel warm but not too hot. 
Some of the bugs had actually picked up again now, which was relatively annoying, but I wasn't really too focused on them. I was just focused on what was happening up here. Now, I eventually get to the attack spot where we were before, and I realise that one of them have left a bottle behind and I pick it up. I need to return it back to them because it's their property later. And I head off in the direction that they told me that they'd seen the person. And surprise, surprise, I can't find anything. I had a good look round and I'm pretty sure I saw the big tree they were describing. And there's nothing there. I actually spent more of my time looking up, worried that some kind of animal was going to jump down and try and attack me than finding a person up there, but who knows. Maybe somebody was crazy and just decided to be Spider-Man for the day, but there was no mass, I couldn't find anything. I then start my walk back, and things are quite normal. I'm looking forward to getting back and I actually want to make a coffee because I'm quite tired now. As I'm walking, I notice something odd. It almost looks like little orbs of light floating around where I am. This is particularly bizarre. It kind of looks like when you've got an old camera pointing somewhere in the dark and it picks up all the orbs. There was quite a few of them and it looked really pretty. No, it wasn't Blossom and it wasn't spider webs, but this was bizarre. There seemed to be a couple of them, then probably hundreds all around. I wiped my eyes a couple of times and tried to grab one, but I couldn't seem to. They all moved too far in front of me. As I stopped in a moment in awe about how beautiful this is, I hear a whistle sound. Thinking it's one of my friends, I actually did a whistle back. They whistle back to me one more time, and I say, hey, I gotta get back now. I'll catch you at the station, and start laughing to myself. I think, wow, they've almost got me with that one, and I decide that I should just pick up the pace a bit, so... They don't try and pull any other pranks on me. What was kind of stuck in my mind at this point is how weird it was seeing all of the orbs of light. It was really beautiful and it gave a tranquil feel to where I was walking. It was kind of like the things you'd see in old books where they say about fairies and stuff, but it was definitely odd. I start to think that maybe this was some kind of plant that I didn't know about that blossomed heavily. And I make it back to the station. I didn't mention what I had heard or seen to any of the other guys, just thinking it was one of those things, and I make the coffee, and the other couple are gone. I then see the ranger that was looking after them, and he looks at me and says, I don't know man, there was something off about those people. You know you hear all those rumours, but I don't believe in all of that, but they looked really scared, and they weren't exactly the kind of guys that I guess you would consider to pull any kind of games with us, you know? And I said, yeah. He said one of them was actually a medic and the other was a teacher, so we know they're pretty trustworthy people. I said, yeah, but come on, they were just dehydrated, right? He looked at me in the eyes and said, I don't know, man. Be careful out there. And that was that. So I enjoyed my coffee and I ended up going home not too long after as the shift was over. But there wasn't really too much going on in my mind. I just started talking to my then girlfriend and now wife and I was more excited about all of the trips and things we could do together so that quickly filled my time up. Anyway, skip to a couple of days later and I'm back to work. And work was something that I loved so it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. So I'm on station once again and we get a call in again about apparently there's a disturbance up by the cabin. Now, I didn't register in the time what one they meant because there was a number of them, but it's one I hadn't been to before, and they said to me did I mind swinging by that way, which I had no problem doing. Now, the only thing I really didn't like about doing was going into one that had spiders and things. We get some pretty nasty ones out here, and I remember the time that one had fell onto my head, and I didn't realise for about 30 minutes until I brushed my hair and a big old spider fell on the floor with a plod. I tried kicking it but missed, and I didn't know where it went at home. But yeah, I'm pretty paranoid of the things. Also, you can get homeless people who live out there, or squatters, or god knows what, so it was never a good thing. 
Plus, not to mention, often they're dangerous and in risk of collapse because they're so old. And especially if there's any kind of insect that's decided to make the wood its home. So yeah, I wasn't really up for this one, to be honest with you. So I head out with all of my things and I make sure I have a nice hat on. Because if any spiders are going to fall on me and try and attack me, I don't want them on my head. So that's what I do. Now, it was going to be about a good hours or so walk to get to this place, and again, it was a bit far off the path, so this wasn't good immediately. I ended up making it to the edge of the trowel, and I start making my way in there. While I'm walking, I'm actually having issues trying to save my pants from the scrubs and things around me. There's all kinds of nettles and nasty things that are starting to get into my legs, I ended up getting stung by some plants a few times and it was really annoying. Especially because this is still in the summertime so I'm quite hot at this moment and the sweat is really not a nice feeling with the stinging of the plant. Now I get to where this place should be and I absolutely cannot find it. I re-triangulate my position multiple times and it should be exactly where I am. I should be proximal to it. I ended up putting in a few more calls to the station, and eventually they guide me in the right direction again. I ended up finding an old building, but this one was really small. It almost looked like a small kind of shed thing where you'd store things. I say, yeah, I found it, let me go check it out. And there's a weird smell coming from this thing. It starts to smell really, really bad, and I'm starting to get worried that maybe it's the worst. I do have to investigate though, so I go closer and closer. I realise that there's an old door holding this thing shut which is to a storage area. So I grab the biggest stick I can find and try and use it like a police battering ram. This didn't work and I sat down for a minute trying to figure out how I was going to open this. I then decide just to kick it and I give it one big kick and it comes ajar slightly and the smell was absolutely foul and overpowering and lots of different flies and things pour out. Now I actually had to wait for a moment not to vomit and I decided to go back and give it one last good kick and it comes open thankfully. Now covering my nose and with my torch I peer in and I find an animal's remains in there which clearly got stuck in there and couldn't get out but it was disgusting. You could see by the fur on its body that it definitely wasn't a person, but it was too far gone to identify what it was and I just leave it. I soon realised though that this couldn't have been the cabin that I was told to investigate. This was far too small and it was a storage unit. Pretty grossed out, I actually took a while heaving up. I don't know how long it was, it was probably a good 5 or so minutes, but luckily I didn't vomit, but my god did I feel tempted to. As I'm sitting there, I then hear a whistle. It's just like the one I heard the other day. Only this time, I'm pretty sure I recognised it as one of the friends that I worked with. I start laughing and go to do the whistle again but stop because I'm not going to put my hands in my mouth and make myself vomit because of what I've just seen. So now I'm just sitting there laughing while this whistling goes on every couple of minutes for probably 10 minutes or so before stopping. It's coming from the top right of where I am and I decide that I might as well prank my friend back. I want to tell him that I found some kind of computer in that storage unit and I want him to go and investigate because I can't move it, it's locked. He's pretty good with computers and he's pretty good at breaking things open so I know that he'll love to go and try and crack open the side of the computer case and get it out, or just some other stuff like that. Now of course this was a complete liar because there's just a weird animal body there, but I just want my friend to get close and maybe push him a bit as a joke. So yeah, I start walking over and the whistling stops. It's very clear where it was coming from before, and I know I have to walk quite a way to get there, 
because of how quiet the whistling is. Now, I probably walked for a good four minutes when I can see the silhouette of something up ahead. You can just make out that it's all black with its head and shoulders, just kind of lurking around, then slowly going behind a tree. I say hey, or call out my friend's name, but I don't get a reply. I think that's odd and I continue walking. I eventually make it up to exactly where I thought the whistling was and I can't hear anything or my friend. Thinking that maybe he's just went off again, I decide that I should head back. I turn around to head in the direction that I come from and suddenly I can see the cabin, one that I haven't seen before. This is it. This is a cabin I was supposed to find. That's odd. Thinking maybe my friends already investigated it, I start to head back but realise that he probably hasn't found this too. It's kind of in some overgrown area and it looks pretty dated but it looks like somebody lived in there long ago. Now I have to be careful because we've had reports of activity in here and they even see a light on but I can't see any of this at this point. Now, as I'm observing it slowly walking closer, I'm sure I can make out the silhouette of a person again in the top. I think this is pretty bizarre because it's kind of like a one story thing with an attic above it. But I don't know why anybody would be in there. I was more convinced it was some kind of animal that was living in there that I'd just seen. But I don't know. So. I start to walk over relatively carefree at this point, convinced it's just going to be an animal but brace him for the spiders and other things I do not want to encounter. Like I said, I really don't like these things and I'm talking myself out of being worried by them. At this point in time, this was by far my biggest concern. Now, I get to only a few meters away and I realise the door's broken. It's broken to the point that you don't need to use force to enter, you can literally just nudge it. I turn on my light and I see nothing. I quickly pan around and yes, there is a big old spider. It's not far from the door so I duck very far under it and I manage to convince myself not to look up. You can see that there's not really a floor above or anything. It's kind of just like a very thin top but nowhere for you to stand really. You know if you go up there you'll basically fall through the top, so there's no real worries about me doing that. I scan in the first room and this place is really ancient looking like well over a hundred years old. I can't really see too much but there's some hooks and things where I guess I used to do hunting and whatnot. Now there is an underground area to this but I didn't want to go in there because of the spiders so I decided to avoid it. There's basically a hole in the corner that I could probably go down, but I'm definitely not going to do that. I think whatever's under there can stay under there and it's not for me to investigate. Now, I turn to head back, having thoroughly searched through most of it, when I hear a whistle again. This time it sounds like it's next to me. With a gasp, I turn the torch round and quickly do a 360 but I can't find anything. That's when I slowly look up and realise that it's coming from above me. There must be something on the roof or up there. I don't know what it is at this point, thinking maybe it's some kind of owl or something injured up there. I decide that I should probably go and look. I quickly pan my torch around and look throughout all of the top thing. I can just about see through it because it's kind of transparent slightly and you can see there's nothing up there. So I decide just to give this old owl one chance of rescue. I make my way up to the crawl space where you can basically go in and there's a very small ladder here. Hoping that maybe there's some kind of light or something that I can pull on, I slowly make my way up the ladder. I put my arm through and go to pull on the light switch where I think it should hang from. That's when I feel something on my arm. I feel two, three, 
four or five pressure points and something warm up my arm and I can feel a lifting force. Almost not registering what's happened, I slowly turn my head up and I can see a human arm pulling me up. It's not like a normal human arm though, this looks like it comes from a corpse and is all battered and bruised and very black and dark looking. I let out a scream like a girl, I quickly jump down and the arm just seems to vanish back into where it come from. I grab the torch again and quickly shine the light up thinking something's about to chase me but I can't see anything. There's no shadow of where the body should be on the top, nothing. With that, I sprint and kick the door open and I half fall down in the process. I start sprinting as fast as I can and to make it even worse, a spider fell on me which I basically punch off my body. I actually hurt myself quite a bit from the force of it with the adrenaline. I sprint and sprint and quickly glance back as I'm starting to get away from this and I quickly look onto the roof hoping to see some kind of person up there that could explain this but I don't see anything. I sprint and sprint and make it quite a good way into the woods. Not really entirely sure if I'm being followed or not, I decide I have to keep up a long distance running pace. This is actually really bad for my legs because I'm running off the trowel at this point and I'm really getting my legs cut up but I don't care. Luckily being a ranger I'm in pretty good shape and I managed to keep up a really nice pace. What just happened? I'm actually so scared that I don't radio in anything to the team and I just try and sprint back as quick as I possibly can. I start sipping on water where I'm trying to keep myself going without stopping for as long as possible. Eventually this created a new issue where I actually had to vomit a bit while I was jogging but I didn't care. I quickly slip some more water to keep me going and eventually the pace catches up with me and I have to slow down. I frantically look to my left and right desperately trying to see if there's anything chasing me but I can't see anything. I'm not much further from the station now so I put my hands on my knees and try and capture my breath. Now I can hear some of the sounds of insects around me and some landing on my skin, but I don't care. Where I was jogging I probably looked so vascular and like a good meal to them, but I don't care. It honestly only takes me about 3 minutes to catch my breath which really surprised me, and I start walking now covered in sweat. I'm only about 3 minutes from the station, and I go to radio in what's happened but I realise there's no point, I'm nearly back at the station. There's some other people outside and they kind of look at me like I'm a crazy man. Looking down at my arms I can see why I've gone very red from the jogging and I quickly open the door. Some guys rushed over to me and say what happened are you okay and I stop them I say I'm fine I'm fine. It's just um something weird happened when I found that cabin. I say I'm sure somebody was up there in that attic. I heard them whistling and when I gone up there something grabbed me and the guys started bursting out laughing. They say yeah right, did you actually go there or not? I say I told you I went up there and I think somebody's in there in the attic but they say that's not possible. How could somebody be standing on paper thin top? And they completely dismiss my claims. Really frustrated. I go to the bathroom just to try and get some of the sweat off of me and I look at myself in the mirror for a while when one of the older rangers comes in and says yep you met him don't worry son I know they're laughing at you but I believe you we've been having reports of weird things happening there for absolutely years don't worry you'll get used to it used to it I shout at him how could I possibly get used to that why don't they believe me and they say they do, I think they're just scared of it too. Now, this was a number of years ago that it happened, and luckily I've never been requested to go back there again, and to be honest, if I did, I wouldn't go. I still have nightmares about it to this day. Every time I have to put my hand in somewhere I don't know, I'm pretty sure I have some kind of trauma where I start sweating and shaking a bit, half expecting something to grab me again. 
if this was some kind of animal or some kind of homeless person, I could sit with that and that's fine. But their arm literally looked like it belonged to a dead person. But the rangers were right, there's no way anybody could have been up there. I doubt this could support the weight of a small animal, let alone a fully grown human. But I'm sure that's what grabbed me. Except it wasn't. It wasn't like a living person. I don't know, I just really can't get the right words out to describe how I feel trying to recount this story to you all. It was almost like I was touched by something I shouldn't have been, and I really feel like something had stalked me out there in those woods. Nothing like it has ever ever happened since, and I'm not much longer from changing jobs now, but it just does not sit right with me. I hate the fact that when things like this happen, people don't always take you seriously, but they don't see the nightmares that I have because of this, and they don't understand how much it still affects me even to this day. I work as a ranger, and there's one thing that still gives me chills to this day just thinking about it. There was a particular area that I worked in where we had a couple of old abandoned buildings and whatnot, and we were told just to avoid them unless necessary. Now one day it was necessary, because we had to survey whether one was safe because it was about to be demolished and basically make sure nobody was in there. The task fell to me and I didn't have much of an issue with doing so, and I eventually get to this area. Now I check out the building and it's completely fine. The building itself was actually pretty cool, and two stories, so I check out the first floor and everything's fine, and I make my way up to the second floor. It's while I'm on the second floor that I have a strange feeling, almost like a presence was there. I realise that I'm alone here and I'm just freaking myself out and slowly head down, and as soon as I make it outside, I can see a figure in the top. It looks like somebody dancing there, but they're almost transparent and completely white. I quickly turn my flashlight on there, and immediately it disappears. I only saw this for about 4 or 5 seconds, but I know for a fact nobody else was there other than me. I dropped the flashlight and sprinted to my truck, and drove out of there, and I reported what I'd seen, and apparently I wasn't alone in this. Apparently some other rangers too had seen this same apparition, calling it the Dancing Kenny. That was the only time that I'd ever experienced it, but it still scares the life out of me even thinking of it now. Hello, let me preface this by saying that I've always wanted to believe aliens and ghosts etc, but I've always had a kind of hard to believe attitude I guess. So my story starts from one day a few years ago, I ask a friend of mine if he wants to go to the local forest with me. Now it's fairly small, only a few miles long, I've been there a hundred thousand times growing up, but he never has, it's all words. Not like a campground or anything like that, and there rarely is anybody ever there, even during the day. So I pick him up around 5 or 6 and we go. It was tons of fun, just walking around and hanging out. Maybe like 8 now, and the woods are pitch black. I suggest we leave, so we start walking down the path back to his car, which is probably a mile away. I don't remember in that moment if it was a small noise, or if we both saw movement, but... I looked over to the left, and I swear I saw something that shook me to my core. It was a humanoid looking creature with no legs, which was weirdly clear, or see-through, moving fast. Towards the way we came, so away from our car. Now it almost appears as though it's gliding over things, making zero noise as we watch it go by. We then looked back and saw a giant bright light coming down the path towards where the figure was moving. Which is weird because there's no roads or anything. Now I really can't imagine why there would be light like this. I've been there late at night when a couple ranger would be in the parking area, but it looks nothing like this and is probably ten times brighter. I was frozen and terrified. I look over to my friend saying, did you see that? And he looks at me literally uncontrollably shaking, 
maybe even on the verge of tears, like, what was that light? So at this point, we both just ran. I ran as fast as I could, the entire way back to the car and we left. I wanted to make sure that we're on the same page and he drew a little sketch which looks exactly like what I saw. I mean literally identical. I was terrified and 100% believe in ghosts now. I can't imagine what else it could have been, especially because I see no legs and no noises made. Somebody sprinting through the leaves like that would definitely make noise but it was so quiet. You could hear a pin drop. I still to this day have no idea what it was and get a little shook thinking about it. I'll never forget the night of August 14th, 2021. I was fishing the river with my friend in a suburb of Minneapolis slash St. Paul, MN. We loved coming to this public park to fish because it was quiet and there was a nice sandbar to fish from. This park had a burial memorial quite close to it. Now after fishing for a better part of the day, we decided to leave at dusk in order to get back to our vehicles that we had to take through the trail through the woods, which was about a five minute walk. I put a clip on my light on the bill of my hat so we can see on the trail. I remembered when I first glanced ahead down the trowel, I saw two circular white lights that I assume are fireflies. Once we got further down the trowel, we were closer to the area where I had seen the fireflies. It was then that I saw a pair of eyes that were either highly reflective from my lights or glowing white. It wasn't long before I could make out a body. It was a very large white body on four legs, bigger than a wolf but unnaturally skinny. I couldn't make out any features because its eyes are so bright. I wanted to warn my friend but all I could manage to say is that there's something in the way there. We had no choice but to proceed because this is our only way back to the vehicles. This thing just stared us down and didn't make a sound. My friend yelled at it to try and scare it away but it doesn't react at all. I then yelled after she did and it responded back mimicking my voice. I honestly questioned myself and thought that I was imagining things, so I yell again, and it responded back at the same volume and exact same pitch, just like my voice, and now we've realised this isn't an animal. We both continue on the path in silence, but I maintain eye contact with the creature. I felt like this thing was ready to attack us at any moment, but it just stood there staring. Eventually, we're out of the woods and I can no longer see its eyes. We made it back to our vehicle which gave us a sense of relief. I asked my friend, did you hear that thing talking back to me? She said she did and it sounded like my voice when it responded back to us. If she hadn't have heard the voice, I would have assumed that I'd imagined it. Now, we went over what happened and our stories were exactly the same. Except she said the creature had a wolf-like head. This event happened three years ago roughly during mid-July. I lived in Montana, outside of a rural community with a population of 2,000. During this time, I lived in a small one-floor ranch home by myself. My nearest neighbours lived one mile away and was a farmer. I never had many strange encounters leading up to this one, but the woods by my house always had an ominous feeling to it. Soon after moving in, I realised why the previous homeowners left pretty quickly. I'd start to hear noises in the woods. They weren't just any noises, but what sounded like blood curdling screams and growls. And after some research, I learnt that even something like a raccoon or bobcat can make these unnatural noises and chalked it up to being that, but still, it just never felt right, it's hard to explain, but I never felt like this before and it was just something about the woods around my house that makes me really uncomfortable, like I was always being watched. The first experience I couldn't explain happened about two weeks after I moved in. There's a thunderstorm and the thunder was loud enough to keep me awake. I never did feel comfortable in the storms by myself. 
The lightning was crazy and would light up the whole surrounding area for a fraction of a second. I was laying on the couch and got up to get a glass and a drink at the sink. It was about 2am if I recall correctly. Above it, there's a small window that gives a view of my yard leading up to the tree line. When the next flash of lightning hit, I saw it, and immediately, I realised that it wasn't a long view, but it gave me enough time to see whatever this thing was. I was near enough the tree line, just a few yards into it, and at first I thought I was looking at a bear, but it wasn't a bear. It was standing on two legs with its face pointing towards the house. Its legs were like a dog's and I could clearly make out hocks. It was hard to tell the colour of the fur but it was dark. Its upper body was massive with a wide torso and arms that could almost reach the ground standing. Strangest thing is how the upper body seemed to dwarf the lower body. After standing there frozen in shock, I waited for the next lightning strike but when it happened it wasn't there. It happened so quickly and was gone so quickly. After that, I bought a gun and would actually sleep with the gun within an arm's reach of myself. The next encounter is what I consider the most frightening of my life. This is actually for several reasons. Now, for several weeks nothing worth nothing happened. I don't get cable where I live and one night I was watching something and my satellite kept acting up. I didn't like going outside at night but this would be quick and I had an antenna that I could move around. Nothing could happen for a few weeks so I decided to just go out and go for it. I grabbed my gun and flashlight. The first thing I noticed was the eerie quietness that surrounds me. This time of year at night the woods are active with all types of creatures. Not tonight. Despite the fear I was developing, I made my way over to the satellite and began to adjust it. I then heard a small snap of a twig and quickly turned around to my left and shined the light towards the direction of the noise. What I saw horrified me, and did so for the rest of my life. I was immediately met with red eyes. These eyes were colour of blood and they're evil. The head of this thing looked like a mutated German Shepherd. I don't like to say it, but it looks like a werewolf almost. A long snout and pointed ears. The fur was black and shaggy in some places. I could see this creature's extremely developed muscular features and it dwarfed even the biggest humans on earth. It was half in and out of the woods, almost crouching, and it still came up to my head at six feet. Fully standing, this thing was probably 8 feet, I estimate. I was about 20 feet from this thing. I didn't even consider my gun, which I had brought to protect me. Chances are in hindsight, the little .223 bullets would have just annoyed the thing before it tore me to shreds. I back away slowly, never breaking eye contact. I gently pick up my gun and my flashlight and my reflexes kicked in. I chose flight. Maybe not the best option, but even if I stayed there, this thing would kill me. I ran the fastest I ever have in my life and didn't once turn back. I have no idea if it was pursuing me, so I get back to the house, lock every door, window, and cover the curtains behind me as I sat with my back against the wall, cradling my gun all night. I didn't get a wink of sleep that night and not for the following few days, and to make a long story short, I'm not living there anymore. Now people will often talk about Sasquatch being harmonious with nature and whatnot. I mean sure, if you see one though it might be scary, but it's probably more in awe of you than anything, but with this thing it was totally different. It felt unnatural and somehow sinister. It felt evil, really like it was toying with me, and I believe it would have killed me if I had have stayed there. I've never seen or experienced anything like this again in life. I work as a ranger. Now, this is something that I've done for a while, and which my father done also. So being outside wasn't really new to me, and luckily I had a dad who would take me on adventures and trips quite often, so I felt really peaceful when I was out in the woods and the great unknown. 
Now I'd like to share a story with you that happened when I was a little bit younger and in the start of my career. I'd been asked to survey a new area. Now let me just put this out there that I'm not in the United States of America and in the country that I live we don't always have very good cell reception so sometimes you can only rely on your radio and nothing else. Now that was great until the radio stopped working but I'll get to that. Now the area that I had to survey was completely new to me and it was kind of cool. Apparently it had a very old bunker there. Now I'm not exactly sure why the structure was still there today, I guess it just cost too much for people to remove it, but I needed to go and check out the integrity of it as well as the rest of the area, because we were planning to build another path around this area, and it would take a while, and we were going to try and restore an older one, but it was my job to check out how things were. Now I really enjoyed my job. And being out in the woods really helped me reminisce to different adventures that I had with my father when I was younger. My father really instilled to me the importance of enjoying and living your life and it's something that I still carry with me to this day. I had a couple of bad times in my childhood so I guess it was nice to put a lot of that behind me and just to try and focus on the good things. Now the walk in the forest isn't too bad. It's relatively sunny, but there's a really nice amount of shade being cast onto the trees in front of me. So I was actually having quite a nice journey to be honest. I was following the old trail because I couldn't be bothered to walk through the actual forest off the path because I was going to have all kinds of bugs and nasty insects on me if I did that. And also it was a really good way to ruin whatever clothing that you were wearing. I remembered one thing that stood out to me as being a little bit odd was a tree kind of sideways. It kind of looked like a soccer goalpost had been made in the middle of the woods and I was someone who absolutely loved to play soccer so I thought this was quite funny and amusing but it was kind of weird. You could see too it had almost been perfectly cut at the bottom which is something I found rather odd. You don't really see it too often and you'd have to be really strong if you put it up there on your own. I thought maybe somebody was camping there, but I realised that this probably wasn't the case, and I continue on. Now another thing that I noticed was pretty odd is that I'm pretty sure I could see silhouettes moving ahead of me in the woods. Now I can't say much for certain, but it almost looked like something opaque up ahead of me. I don't have the best of eyes, I'd like to put that out there, but I had my glasses and I could still notice this, so I thought this was strange. Even if I took my glasses off, I'd still seem to notice this thing. Or things, whatever you want to call it. Now this only happened for the briefest of moments when I was walking, but I was convinced it was my eyeballs making all of this and maybe my brain. I wasn't going to accept that anything too strange was happening, so I continued going. Now, I'm in a really beautiful part of the world too and the sounds of the birds and things are really nice and somewhat comforting for me. As I make my way around a corner, I notice another tree knocked down. This time there's three of them. They're all pretty much stacked on top of each other, again kind of making like a soccer post which I think is really bizarre. I haven't really seen many things like this before but I actually think to myself if I was younger I would have loved that. I used to play soccer with my friends and we didn't actually have a proper goalpost so we would just kind of make one between two trees by putting a large log through it. Every so often it would fall down and it's probably incredibly dangerous because if it fell and hit someone on the head they'd probably have died but we didn't really care at the time or think much of it. I notice again it's strange how the trees are pretty much perfectly cut and placed there, so yeah. I decide that this is a little strange but just continue on, and I notice more and more logs like this. It's weird because it looks as though they've been placed there very recently and I can tell the forest isn't that old. I mean the bits of wood that are cut down aren't old. So it's not like I've come across an old logger's trowel. And also there wasn't any loggers in this area or we would have known about it, so this is a little confusing to me. As I'm walking, I can pretty distinctly see a lady up ahead of me. It almost looks like a lady with long hair, 
spot, it just moves behind the tree line and vanishes. I only saw this for a couple of seconds, but it was almost like the transparent things I'd seen before, but with hair this time. But the hair didn't look like it was on anybody living. I'm pretty sure that I need to get back and have a rest, so I decided to pick up my pace now. Now, surprisingly, I wasn't actually too scared at this point because I was just happy to be doing my job, and I kind of knew the way. Now, I eventually come up to the old bunker, or at least where it should be, and I feel a little relieved at this. I decide that I'm going to stop and rest there, but before I do, I pick up some rocks so I can throw them and try and disturb any animals or reptiles that might be lurking there. The last thing I want to do is sit myself down then a snake comes and bites me. It's quite funny but it does happen. Now I throw my stones and nothing happens. I go to throw my last one and I realise something odd. The stone seems to keep going almost much further than what it should be. It's hard to describe, but it's almost like somebody's given it an extra push, and I think this is really odd. I look around to try and see anybody, and I kind of see one of those translucent things again. Now, there's lots of folklore where I'm from too, so I put it down to being one of these things, and the one I'm thinking of is relatively friendly, pretty much a friendly spirit, so I'm kind of put at ease almost. But I do think this is odd, watching as it momentarily vanishes between the trees again. It's my job now to survey this thing, so I go to grab my flashlight and head on. I have to go through where an old window was, and I tell you, I've probably never spent so long in my life trying to survey something before going through. I can see inside looks pretty empty, and I can see the first stones that I threw. Weirdly, there's no insects or bugs or anything, which is pretty bizarre because this would make a perfect home for them, being nice and out of the elements. There's a very, very large door to this thing which is metallic and welded shut, so obviously I'm not going to open the door. Now I make my way through and I can see my stones. I go to take my first step into somewhat of the darkness and I pause. I can hear my stone gliding again, and that's weird. I shine my torch up there and there it is, really far into this bunker thing. It's a lot farther than where I threw it, and this is something I find really odd, and it's the beginning of me getting a little bit unsettled. I'm not sure whether maybe there is an animal in here or something, or who knows, maybe some kind of wild person living out here, but... It's enough to worry me, really. I pick up my other stones and, reluctantly, I have to continue. Stupidly at the time, I thought I'd be safe with my stones because I thought, if anything comes, I'm going to throw these in your face very hard and you're going to give up before I do. Yeah, I know looking back in it, it probably wouldn't have done much of anything, but it given me more confidence to continue. Now, I have to make it down quite a long hallway and the air just felt different. I don't know how to describe it, but it was almost like it was incredibly stale but very heavy. The whole atmosphere felt different, I guess, and it shouldn't have been. I know this thing was sealed off and there wasn't much ventilation, but this was a different kind of thing entirely. While walking too, I almost felt like I'd walked into another time zone almost. It was very weird. I keep throwing my stones just in case there's an animal, but to be honest it wouldn't have made much difference now. I've got four, down to three because of one of the rooms I threw the stone into, but let's say an animal come out to attack me, I'm not really going to be able to sprint around in time, but hey, I guess I wasn't thinking. I make it into one of the rooms and there's quite a big spider there, and I decide I'm not going to bother going in there. I say, Spider-Man, why did you throw that stone at me earlier, laughing to myself. I then make it towards the very last room, which is at the end of the corridor, and I throw my stone as hard as I can. I don't actually know why I did it. Maybe it was like a show of force or something. And, weirdly, I don't hear anything. I don't hear the stone reaching the ground or anything at all. 
I think maybe I threw it onto some old clothes that were abandoned there or something, but weirdly shining my torch down to the last room, I can't see anything whatsoever. I take my first steps into the room, very cautiously now, and there's no one but once more a spider. That's when I hear the sound of a door slam and footsteps. I freeze in my spot and stupidly I turned off the flashlight and just remain completely still. I can hear the sounds of the footsteps getting closer and closer. I quickly dart to the side and I'm just out of sight of the corridor and I'm in fight or flight now. I think that's what you guys call it. And I'm just frozen to the spot, absolutely glued there. I'm trembling now and not really sure what to do. I decide that my only options are just to fight. I mean, I can throw a stone and maybe hit something. You know what? I'm going to do both. I take a deep breath in, I throw a stone as hard as I can, and turn on the flashlight and in an instant, I turn around to the corridor and let out a really loud screamy sound, ready to fight to the absolute death of whatever this thing is. And there's nothing. Silence. I quickly pan the torch around trying to look for anyone, even if it's just a mouse, but I can't find a thing. That's so odd. It sounded like somebody was just about to sprint for exactly where I was. I then quickly look where I come from and again I can't see anything. Now weirdly, up in one of the rooms that I'd passed earlier, I can see a strange bluish glow. Now I stop for a moment confused as to what I'm looking at and I turn off the torch now. That's when I can very faintly see some rainbow colours off ahead of me coming from the doorway. It's weird but I see kind of a blue, then a purple, then greeny colour, eventually fading out as almost a dark blue glow. It's really weird and it's quite difficult to describe. But it's almost like a dying torch has went out very slowly, but the light slowly retracts from the source. I really don't know how to describe it, because it's like nothing I've ever seen before, and I'm really confused. The only thing I could probably compare it to is kind of like a radioactive material glow, if that, but stronger. Now oh, this is really odd, and with my last stone, I decide to throw it into the room. Nothing happens now. I feel relieved and go a little bit further picking up one more that I threw. I'm definite that nobody was behind me, but fear's starting to really take over. I throw the other stone I've just picked up into the room, and there's a flash of light. It's kind of like a white colour, and all I see for a few seconds is a silhouette of somebody or something peering around the corner of that room and it all goes dark again. I now realise that something's really off and I think somebody's blinded me of a flashlight and almost in awe now at what's happening and feeling a lot more brave, I let out a scream and sprint towards the room half expecting to have a big fight like before. I charge in and fall to the ground. I drop my flashlight and I can hear somebody scurry away. I think quick 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 get up get that light. I need to know what this person's doing here and I say hey you're not supposed to be here and I quickly grab the torch and I quickly beam it into the other room and down the corridors but again I see nothing. Now I'm pretty convinced that I'm in a really bad situation and the fear once again is taking a hold of me. I go towards the still door where I can climb out the window and that's when I hear it three distinct, very loud bangs on the door. It sounds like the kind of knocking that you'd hear if somebody's trying to get into a car, but this is on a very thick steel door that nobody should be able to make this much sound on. It was incredibly eerie and made me freeze in the spot. The next thing I knew, I'd backed away into the room I'd just come from and turned off the light trying to make sense of what was happening. It was an instinct, I guess, because I didn't really have to think whatsoever about doing this. After a few seconds of listening to my own heavy breathing, 
I realised that I need to get out of here now. And I hatch a plan. I'm going to throw the other stone into the corridor just to make sure nobody's there for definite and jump through the window. It's going to be pretty difficult but I'm fairly athletic and I like my chances. The thing is, I don't know what's on the other side of it and what was knocking on the door. But then it dawns upon me that maybe something was in there too and did it from my side. That's all I need to know and the next thing I know, I take my first and second and then third step forward, jogging at first, until I hear something behind me. I can hear the sounds of something following me, not far behind. I quickly glance over my shoulder but it's futile considering how dark it is and I let out a scream and sprint. I throw my torch towards the opening but it misses and bounces off and breaks. I can't believe what is happening. I manage to make it through myself and jump up ready to fight. Again there's absolutely nothing, but how? I was in there and I know something was following me. I start screaming out. I'm not going to repeat it here but I was really angry suddenly, feeling like all my energy had drained from my body. How is there nothing here? I then look up and try and peer into the darkness to see if there's anything whatsoever and I don't see anything that can rationally make up for what just happened to me. I start screaming again and say come out whoever you are, almost expecting to see some crazy person in there but there's nothing. I start to slowly back away from this bunker, vowing to myself never to go back there again when I hear it again. That bassy thud coming from that door once again. Only this time I'm certain it was from the inside. It sounded exactly like before. And I'm sure I can hear some kind of very faint whispering coming from the bunker. I do a 180 and begin sprinting up the hill. I'm not very fit to be honest. I definitely wasn't then but... I managed to do one of my quickest sprints in my life as I start to make it back towards the safety of the path. I keep glancing over my shoulder half expecting to be followed, but there's nothing. Just the sound of my laboured breathing now and the dirt that I'm kicking up under my shoes. I'm jogging through a very beautiful part of the forest and it's in complete contrast to the emotions that I was feeling. I'm feeling absolutely overwhelmed by what had just happened, which to me was very clearly a paranormal experience. I make it almost all the way back to my base and unfortunately nobody else was there that day. So I quickly get onto the phone and I make a call to my dad. I say, dad, 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 you're not gonna believe what just happened. He says, son, calm down, are you hurt? I say, no, no, not like that, I'm safe. And I start to explain what had happened to me. I start explaining the things I was seeing on my walk and my dad explained that it's probably some kind of positive spirit Then I say no dad listen. I had to check out a bunker that was long abandoned there and explain everything that happened to me and my dad suddenly goes very quiet. He tells me son promise me that you'll never go back there again and we have to take you to somebody to cleanse you of whatever evil spirit is following you. I say I promise dad and I never went back there again. We went off to see a spiritual person who could try and cleanse me of what evil spirits were following me or tried to attack me that day. And while working in that job, I never ever went back to that area again. About 10 years after I'd quit the job, I'd found out that the bunker had been completely renovated and there was actually a path there. But even to this day, they still get reports of people hearing weird sounds and whispering in a certain part of the woods. I vowed never to go back there and I never will, but I'm certain it's in that spot that I went to. I'm somebody who is spiritual and believes in the unknown, but this was a whole nother level for me, and it's kind of installed a fear into me. I'm not going to say that I'm psychic or anything, but I'm pretty sure I can sense when there's spirits and I think I was absolutely overwhelmed this day.
Now I lived in the outskirts of a national park in a cabin. It was a four mile drive from the main road just to get to the property and we had no plumbing or power. This property was right next to where the park started. To call it the middle of nowhere is an understatement. My roommate at the time was interning with the park service, but he's really a city kid. Every evening at the dead of night, I'd been hearing noises in the woods, what I thought was like somebody walking, but they'd just stop in a particular overgrown area of the jungle, so your mind would start to doubt itself. Maybe a pig, a cat, or just the wind. The cabin didn't have a locking door, and the owners didn't want me to install one, so I start to sleep in my car. Now this is a huge property, and I'd park my car over an acre away from the cabin, where I was hearing something. I started to hear the footsteps again. I moved out, and my roommate, who thought I was bonkers, stayed and still slept there without locking the door. He got robbed once, but twice after I'd moved out, so I finally put up some motion cameras. There was a man with a long rifle who'd hike up to the property and set up in the bushes watching us. I was on a hiking trip with a few friends of mine in South America, and we eventually come across a graveyard. Now we could see that there was a funeral on, and there was a group of people standing around a grave. They're all dressed pretty nicely and obviously in all black, but something about it felt different. We decide that we're just going to continue past them and take our hats off showing respect. There was probably about 10 of them in total, and somebody holding a book there. We couldn't really see them too well because they're a bit further away than we are, and we continue on our trip. Eventually, on the concluding parts of our trip, we have to pass by there again when we notice something odd. We can't see the graveyard. Before, we could see a beautiful graveyard with a really nice church there. But now, there was just an abandoned one that obviously wasn't the same thing we had seen. That's when we realised that we're standing in the exact same spot that we are at before, and curiosity got the better of us and we go to investigate. And weirdly enough, this graveyard had been long long abandoned. It clearly wasn't the thing we had seen before, but it was. We actually stood in the exact same spot where we'd seen the people before, and weirdly, it looked almost identical in terms of positioning, only this time it looked much, much older. And even stranger, as we're standing there, we hear a thunderous roar as lightning strikes not too far off in the distance and a heavy storm picks up with wind. We hiked very quickly the rest of the way out of there back to our cars and drove home in the storm. All of us not knowing what to think of what had just happened. I'm a child of the mountains, and my hometown was completely mountainous, so I spent most of my childhood running through the forests and stuff. And one event that happened when I was 10 kind of remains unexplained still. I was on top of the ridge several hundreds of feet above my house when I start hearing my biological father. I'm adopted, but was allowed to see him frequently yelling. Now in our very redneck area, he had a very distinct voice with no accent, so it's really not possible to confuse him for anyone else. His voice was coming from the other side of the ridge, which is a bit weird in retrospect because nobody lived over that way and everybody avoids the area really. Even when we go hunting around, the terrain was too bad to deal with, lots of thick brush and sudden drops etc. I started hearing him calling my name so I start to go down anyway. It's not a good area but I've been through it a couple of times during the winter with much less vegetation when it was easier to navigate. Now the voice wasn't really getting closer though, but was getting louder. 
And then, this feeling of dread washes over me as I suddenly remembered my father's on a business trip to Germany. I've never ran so quick. I didn't realise it until I got to the other side of the ridge, but the forest had been completely silent on the other side, which never happens unless there's predators around or the wind picks up. Normally I'd think that I was just getting close to black bear territory or something, but the voice obviously makes it confusing. But unlike a number of stories I've heard similar to this, it didn't really stop me from going back into the woods and, in fact, really made me more curious resulting in occasional episodes where I would also think I heard other things, but nothing like this. Now, I was out hunting moose when I was walking back to my car and I heard three consecutive knocks on a tree that I thought was a moose knocking its antlers on a tree. Until it kept knocking three times, it sounded like a stick hitting a tree, and I could hear just the knocking getting closer and closer till I'm finally at my car, so I start to sit and listen for it. I couldn't hear it anymore, and I thought that I was good, so I can literally hear it in the ditch besides me, as it knocks three times, like five feet away from the car, and I actually get out, and I never got a good look, because it was at night and it kept its distance still away from me. Now I still don't know how I didn't hear it move across the road or to the ditch besides me. Now I'm pretty sure that this was Bigfoot. When I was 15 or so, me and my group of friends all slept over at the leader of our friend group's house. This dude lives literally in the middle of nowhere pretty much in a very rural town. It was really isolated there and basically the middle of the woods. It was just a house surrounded by very thick woods. In the evening, we decided to go out and start a bonfire deep in the woods. So we packed up, got all our materials and went straight to the woods. On the way to the spot we'd be making our campfire at, he told us about how creepy the woods are and the numerous things that he's seen there, white skinny figures peeking around his shed, staring at him and running off when he looks at them, whispering and screaming from the woods, even seeing figures that always watch him, you know all the good stuff, it set the mood well really. By around 7 at night, we had the campfire set up and it was pitch black outside, as it was the middle of winter in New Hampshire, now I can still remember how creepy the whole vibe was that night. You could not see a single thing besides a ring of light coming out from the fire. Everything else is just a wall of black nothingness, and the sound of the forest was so quiet that it was almost deafeningly loud if we spoke. Now, we ended up needing more firewood or whatever, so the leader takes me with him to go and get it without a flashlight or any light source, mind you, and me walking by him for about a mile and a half down a track by his house into the complete and utter darkness. It was all good. We were all talking, joking around with each other, having a good time, just hanging out when the first started noticing noises. He immediately stopped talking to me. To my left and my right was a bunch of different sounds, screaming, laughter, talking in whispers, shouting, people saying inaudible words. It sounded like there was about 20 people around us. The natural night vision had set in a decent amount and I look over at my friend, who had his head completely down and didn't say a single word. Known for being a complete goofball and wild funny dude, I'd never seen him look so shaken and serious in all my life. He had this look to him that still kind of haunts me to this day, knowing him as a fearless leader type of guy, and seeing him so shook up really scared me. I start to say something along the lines of, what's that, before he cuts me off, ushering me to be quiet. He now makes me face forward, and we're not paying attention to any of the sounds. I did exactly what he said, 
and for the next three or so minutes, it's very uncomfortable and terrifying. I remembered actually feeling physically sick now. By the time we reached his house, the sounds had stopped, and we both grabbed what we needed in silence. That's when I could really listen to the sheer quietness of that night. No birds, no sticks falling, no sound, absolutely silence. Now we walk back to the campsite and luckily nothing else occurred that night. Still, it was the most unsettling and bizarre experience that I've ever had, of which I have no explanation for happening. This happened around 1900s, in the countryside of South Brazil. My grandmother's grandfather was coming home from ball, the parties that they had back in the early days, very late at night. He lived in a small farm, and so, to come from the party place had to walk a long way in the middle of nothing, just trees and bushes, and well, you can imagine how the countryside of Brazil was back then. He told that the second he was walking, he suddenly hears strong noises and lights. Scared, he hid behind the bushes to see what was happening. He said they were very little men who come out speaking a language he couldn't understand, and behind them, huge plates stacked one above another with lights all over them. He stayed hiding and praying in the bushes until they gone, and then ran for his life. My grandmother says that she heard this story a few times in her youth from him, always the same narrative and him praying after. Only after married and when moving to a big city and having children, she actually heard about people talking about these things called aliens, and so all of the descriptions which match up perfectly to what the grandfather told her. Now she's a very religious woman who only believes in the Bible and what God says, so it doesn't actually believe in aliens. One of the weirdest things that happened to me was during one winter near my house. Now, the property that I live on was actually a very old one that my grandparents used to own, and I'd always remember my grandpa telling me weird stories about how sometimes he would see faces out in the woods. I never really took him too seriously to be honest and I thought maybe it was just his mind playing tricks on him, but one day I had an experience I truly can't explain. It was close to nightfall and I kept on hearing a ringing sound outside. It sounded like a ringing in my ears but it wasn't from my head. I decide I have to go out and see what's going on in case there's going to be an electrical fire or something. I was actually pretty paranoid of that at the time. As I got outside, I realised that the sound seems to be coming from all directions and is something that I've never heard before or since. I think this is really odd and I look around at what appears to be a large sheet of ice near a tree. I stare at it until I realise that this is where the sound's coming from, but it seems to be moving. Now I kid you not, there seemed to be a completely transparent sheet of ice that was moving, that looked just like a human. It then puts its hand towards where its mouth should be, and then slowly walks off into the forest, and the noise immediately stops. I very quickly hurried inside, and I tell my mom about what happened, and she tells me that my grandpa used to report seeing these things all the time, and he even had a name for it because he'd see it so frequently. And my mom was actually quite concerned because she too had heard the ringing sound before but never went out to investigate. I've heard the sound since, but I've never been brave enough to go outside again to find out exactly what it is. So when I was in grade 3, my parents were going out for a drive with me. I believe we're going to visit my grandparents and I would stay there for the weekend. 
We're in the middle of nowhere, out in farmlands of southern Ohio, and we're kind of hungry and thirsty, so we look for the gas station for snacks and drinks. Finally, we found a gas station. I was first to go out, and I start running towards it. It's surrounded by trees and looks kind of menacing. The gas station was dark outside, and I looked into the front door. It was abandoned, but there was a back door, so we thought maybe there was a guy from the station in there. We went around the back, and there was an axe dug deep into the door. We left right then and there when our car was pulling away. I then noticed somebody walking out from some bushes, grabbing the axe and trying to pull it out from the door. I screamed to my dad. He saw it in the rear view mirror and sped out of there. Today we've tried hard to find any information about the gas station, but unfortunately, we haven't found much, especially because of how long ago it was when it happened. So, I was walking a section of the Appalachian Trail with a couple of buddies when we happened across a bundle of sticks. The sticks were arranged to look like a person. It was obviously placed by somebody, as it was in the dead centre of the trail, leaning against a rock. I thought it was cool, so grabbed it and put it in my backpack. Anyway, we finished the hike and set up for the night in our camping spot. We were all pretty wiped out from the long day, so after dinner, we retired to our prospective tents and cocked in for the night. The next morning, I was the first one awake, so I got up to the coffee, and what did I find? An identical bundle of sticks to the ones that we'd found, sitting atop the pile of charred wood from the previous night's fire. The first thing I did was check my pack, and sure enough, the one I'd picked up was still there. Each of my friends swore they didn't put it there. It was obviously the same. It was weird because we're all adamant about not putting it in there, but I can never be sure it wasn't one of them messing with us. The thing that messes with me is the bundle I found in the morning was almost an exact replica of the one we found on the trail earlier, and I find it hard to believe that one of the guys could have made such a close replica without having serious skill. And it's not like either of us would have placed them one on top of the other on the trail beforehand for us to stumble upon because we're way out in the middle of nowhere. So, I was hiking a section of the North Umpaca Trail, northern part of southern Oregon, a few years back with my sister-in-law. It's about a 72 mile trail broken into sections that can be easy to hike to in one day. At this time, I lived about midway up the trail, fairly remote in a small community. It was mid-fall, and we decided to set out. The trail was running along the south side of the N. Yumpeka River, and was pretty up and down in the beginning. We made it to a fairly flat section that was running just above the river. There was this beautiful view of the river through the trees, so we stopped to get some pictures and take a water break. I immediately felt extremely uncomfortable like we're being watched. I slowly turned my head back to look behind us and across the trail up a small incline. Through the trees I could see a small meadow. Across the meadow, maybe 15 yards around away from us was a tent. An old canvas style tent. As I'm looking, I noticed bones strung from the trees to the meadow, like creepy deaf wind chimes or something. My stomach clenched and I dropped. I leaned in and my sister-in-law whispered, do not turn around to look behind us, just continue walking and I'll tell you when we run. We were close enough to the river that nobody could get right next to us or could have heard this. She did exactly as I told her. Setting off at the brisk walking pace we'd been at before, we got maybe 10 yards and I could hear footsteps through the forest floor coming behind us and slightly above us. That part of the forest is very dense. This is a thick moss covered area under the trees so footsteps make a very specific sound. I leaned forward and told her to pick up the speed. She did. So did I and so did whoever was behind us. I leaned forward again and told her to run as fast as she could and not stop until I told her to. For two middle-aged women, 
both slightly overweight, we ran like the damn wind. <laughs> I just kept telling her, go, go, go. I could see ahead of us that the trail made an incline, basically reared around a cliff. I knew at this point that whoever it was was going to have to come down onto the trail or stop. We kept running. We probably ran at least a mile after that, even though we could no longer hear anyone behind us or above us. That section of the trail was about 9 miles and we were not halfway through when this happened. We eventually slowed down, but just hurried as fast as we could the rest of the way. We had arranged for her younger brother to pick us up. Now, we made it to the next trailhead fairly early so we made our way out to the 138 and started walking east towards home, knowing he'd find us. He did, and was shocked at the story. We got home and immediately called our local sheriff who lived just above us at the ranger station. He came to the house and heard our story. He explained that it might be a day or two before they could get in on the trail as they had a missing hunter at the time they were searching for too. So a few days go by and he shows up at the house and told me that we were not crazy or imagining things as someone really did chase us. I said what did he found? And he looked down to the ground and looked up and said, I'm not going to tell you what we found or how we found it because you'd never go hiking again. What we found was not normal and would not happen up here again. He then basically instructed me to never hike unarmed again. I never found out who they were or why they are out there for us. And I also never hiked that section of the trail again. And apparently it completely burnt last year. I also never hiked unarmed ever again. This was a huge for me, as I'm not really a gun person, I had many incidents while I was actually living up in a national forest with wild animals and other stranger things, but nothing that scared me like this. So we lived in the woods during quarantine, we'd spend the days there, storm or shine, drinking beers and picking up trash swimming and just goofing around. We also started doing something that sounds odd to say aloud but at the time kept us sane. We'd get in the woods, strip our socks and shoes off and hike since we wanted to get out to this little lagoon we'd find and lay out there. It was insanely meditative. I also absolutely loved barefoot wandering. It feels very nice and primal in some kind of way. Anyway, there we roamed like that. The more in tune we got with the woods around us, the better we'd feel. Without the chatter between us and the careless stomping of boots, we'd become a part of the woods in a weird way. Now, we'd surprise people pretty often without meaning to, passing within a couple of feet before they noticed us. It was like our guts started calling the shots. We could feel storms brewing. All the creatures seemed to stop minding us, and we walked like that. So whenever the woods went silent, we knew something was coming. It was one of those days with the thick skies and kind of electric air. It had been stormy out for a few days and the woods were pretty empty. We'd only seen maybe two other souls all day. Darkness had started to creep in, quicker than usual. We were heading out of the woods a bit barefoot and knocking back the dregs of the warm beer, just chatting but not really saying much. I remembered we were coming up to this hill and all of a sudden it was like I'd swollen a snowball. I looked up at her and she was frozen mid laugh. Something was wrong, the woods were off. We were surrounded by murky shadows and dead silence, heavy silence and tense silence. Then we heard it. It was a metallic sort of sound, a kind of clanging that we can't really make out exactly what is. A metal striking stone maybe? Over and over, a bit further down the trail, squarely in between us and way out. We stood there like statues, tucked behind some trees, just listening, a shovel and some digging. We crept closer. I remembered how the sound made my palms itch. My friend's face was flushed red. I told myself it was being stupid. In fact, I had in my backpack a little spade that we used to plant flowers and dig up rocks and such. Who was I to judge this person, but then again? 
that was just a little garden spade. And as we got closer, it became clear that this person had a full on shovel and was digging in the middle of the trowel. I kept trying to explain it to myself. This person was just digging. It was dusk and a lightning storm was hastening our way. But we all cope with quarantine differently. And sure, it was odd to carry a big shovel out there, but maybe they're burying a pet or something. And sure, it makes no sense that they'd bury their pet in the middle of the trail, but maybe they're digging off a bike. And yeah, they don't have a bike, but like that on and on in my mind, churning out possibilities but not really getting anywhere, and my gut was really in a knot now. We were almost on him now. I think it was a him. Though they're wearing a hat, scarf and whatnot, all covered in black, which is crazy for the summer. Maybe he loved that spot and that's just how he went there. My stomach hurt more with every step now. We were both shining in sweat and the sound of metal striking the earth and stone seemed to be deafening. It's really a primal sort of fear, isn't it? Rooted deep in our guts and completely deaf to every excuse I was handing it. We were just wandering along one minute cracking jokes, drinking beer, and suddenly every neuron was firing and every muscle goes tight enough to snap. My mind is racing. I was taking stock of everything. Two girls barefoot in swimsuits and overalls, two empty cans of beer, and I had a big bag of trash and my backpack full of stuff. My friend was holding our bucket of rocks, though we'd pick skinny flat stones. Not really for defense, but water skipping. I had a can of pepper spray buried somewhere in my bag, but to my dismay, I couldn't access it easily. It feels so insane looking back. I've never been in a fight, and I've never really raised my voice much. I'd spent most of my days talking to toddlers about emotional regulation, and yet here I am, suddenly getting ready for god knows what tallying up what I could use as a weapon against a stranger, but all of the excuses I made for this person had suddenly faded away. Maybe my gut was wrong. Maybe he's doing one of a million things. Maybe he'd feel awkward and embarrassed and see us and bolt away. But what if it's right? What is the cost if I'm correct? If we walk past and he swings a shovel, then what? What would the excuse cost us? Something shifted and I don't know what. It felt like a high voltage situation. A single spark in a gas choked room. My friend went white. Said the first word we had exchanged to each other. Don't look at him and run. We ran. Crashed into the woods off the trail. Close to the water. We could jump in if he chased us. We sprint in literally leaping over boulders. Ducking under trees, fawns and stones and sticking into bare soles. I didn't feel them, didn't even notice the blood on my feet until we broke out of the tree line. Later on, we tried to piece it together, tried to understand what had happened. We were completely confused and perplexed, and definitely felt a strange sense of invincibility while sneaking around the woods. It wasn't until we're home, bandaging our feet, that we felt that we'd got out of it. Now. God knows what would have happened if we didn't make it out of that situation the way that we did. God knows what would have happened if he had stopped shoveling and started walking towards us or chased us. This wasn't really deep woods camping, because my friend and I were staying at a designated camp area in a state park but it's still a scary story. So in the middle of the night, I want to say around 1am, I'm woken up to the sound of gunshots. Two of the other friends in my tent were also awake. It sounded like the gunshots were getting closer and closer over the course of half an hour. It went from that sounds far away to that sounds like a bullet about to hit the camp. Like I said, this is a state park where hunting is illegal, which either meant some reckless hunter was ignoring the laws and hunting after midnight, or some deranged lunatic is just walking around taking shots randomly into the woods. So, 
Friends and I stay low to the ground, afraid that a stray bullet will come into our tent. Eventually, we begin to see spotlights crossing over the roof of our tent as state troopers in a helicopter begin searching the area for the suspect. An hour after we heard the gunshots, we also heard some police sirens around the main road above us. So the campsite was located at the bottom of a valley. There were sounds of drop the weapon. I said drop the weapon. A few more sounds of gunshots and some dudes frantically scrambling and following instructions, then eventually silence. The next morning, we went to ask the campsite managers if they knew what happened last night. It turns out, there was a guy who lived in a house higher up the side of the mountain above the main road. He did some meth that night and decided it would be fun to fire his gun at any cars that passed by. The state troopers arrived and arrested him. There's also bullets in some of the trees around camp and in one of the RVs that was parked up. I'm just really relieved that no one was hurt or killed by the gunman, especially after seeing how close the bullets come to some of the camper's tents. It could have easily hit us. Now, a distant hike when I can. Sometimes that means getting up early or staying out late to get as many miles in as possible. Sometimes walking in the pitch dark with a low light headlamp gets really spooky. I grew up in the woods of this area I slept under a canopy of stars more nights than I can count. I've literally trekked thousands of miles of trail, riverbank, lake shore, ridge, bottoms, bogs and creeks. I've hunted the game. I'm establishing this because it's important for you to understand that I've seen and heard and smelt just about everything the region has to offer in terms of the wilderness. The scariest experience though happened around 4.30 in the morning. It was in late spring and the first morning light wouldn't really be visible in the treetops for at least another 45 minutes or so. Now, I'm at the bottom that's wedged between two steep ridges. The trail I'm on was muddy, narrow, and completely helmed in thick underbrush, young maple, and old oak growth. I'm focused on the small light from my headlamp. Just one step after another and I zone out, then I hear a loud crack and I freeze. This is a part I had trouble describing. 4.30 in springtime means I'm the only thing making noise. No birds at this hour, dead quiet. Mid-step I froze. When fight or flight kicks in, you have these immediate instinct falls. The thought that instantly flashed in my mind as I stood there balancing myself is, if I hear that again, I'm turning around and I'm going back in a hurry. Why? Because that sound was not a branch breaking, it wasn't deadfall, it wasn't a widow maker. I'm pretty sure I just heard something intentional. Hearing it twice, well, that meant get out of there. To describe it as best I can, it sounded like a decent sized wooden stick being violently whacked against a tree. More a fungo bat sized stick than a baseball bat. The distinction in my head being that this sound was a crack, not a fud or sump. It's kind of like an explosive sound, but almost like it wasn't. It was terribly loud. I had the sense that it was about 50 yards in front of me and clear. Now, as I stood there completely shocked, I realised the soon to be worst part of my situation. I knew where the sound came from, and I knew where the trail went. In about 30 yards, I was going to come up to a 180 degree turn and start up the ridge going away from the creek. This meant as soon as I got the courage to move towards this noise, I was going to have to turn back to it and get up that ridge. This made me very nervous. Now, I was really worried about maybe finding a murderer or Bigfoot or god knows what. Now minutes pass. I just breathe my foggy breath into my glasses and listen. Nothing. Dead quiet. I get about 20 or 30 minutes until first light. I crank up the headlight and start to slowly creep to my 180 turn. 
When you wear a headlamp in the woods at night, every tree branch can make a really large shadow in front of you, and it makes moving on a trail very difficult. So I get to the turn and also quickly make the bend. I'm moving pretty fast at this point, trying to be quiet, taking tiny shallow breaths so I can listen to whatever's up ahead of me. And then I smelt it. It's a smell that I can't describe. I just imagine wet, rotten death. I've actually worked scenes where human remains have been found in the past as a firefighter. This was like Bay's old decomposition, and it just smelt strange. I'm walking fast, but by the time I made it to the top of the ridge, I was huffing and the first light was showing. I didn't stop moving until full light was out and the birds were chirping. I've heard it all in our woods. I've smelt it all, I'm telling you, but I don't know what the hell that was. Deadfall. And especially branches do make sounds, but nothing like this. My family used to go camping with a few groups of friends when I was a kid. I remembered one Christmas when I was five. We were camping out in the bush. There were nine of us in total at our campsite. We were allowed to wander through the bush. The parents would give us a walkie-talkie and tell us when to come back to camp. We never went far away. Anyway, out of nowhere, an unfamiliar voice came over. It's a man's voice. He said he was Santa and he was trying to find us to give us our presents and asked us to look for him. We all ran back to our campsite excited to say about Santa speaking to us. Then the walkie-talkie was taken off of us and we weren't allowed to go out anywhere. We were all pretty devastated at the time, but now, as an adult, I understand the pure creepiness of it. I still don't know who was talking to us to this day. Now I'm not exactly what you guys on here would call a park ranger, but it's basically the equivalent in the country that I live. I have a couple of stories for you today. Now the first is actually from my childhood, one from when I was younger than I am now. My father really liked to go out on adventures with myself and my brother, and he always planned really cool stuff for us to do. One of these trips involved us going out into the woods and going out camping together. Now this was really interesting for us and we'd never been out in the snow before like this, so of course it would bring new challenges, but it would also bring some new adventure. My other brother at the time didn't bother accompanying us, so it's just me and my dad, but I didn't mind it that way. Sometimes I find that my brother can be a bit self-indulged and only really listen or talk about himself and not really give you good advice back. It's quite annoying because I always seem to give him the bestest advice that I possibly could, but that didn't matter, at least not on this trip. Now we basically planned to go out into the woods for a good couple of days camping and hiking along the way, and this was brilliant for me as I love to go outdoors. Now we drove up to the area that we needed and we set out. We were following the main path and had a designated site that we were going to go camping in. My dad did this for safety reasons as of course his son was with him and he didn't want to be too far away from everyone. When we set out, the snow was no longer falling but there was a lot of snow around and snow on the trees so that just meant you had to be a little bit careful when you were walking because it wasn't always clear whether the ground was kind of like a dry snow or a wet snow and if it's sort of soggy, you can easily get your shoes wet and you have to pretty much head back if that happens. So, being relatively careful, we set out. At first, we're walking through some relatively low bushes and quite big trees. They're kind of like the tall, skinny kind, if you know what I mean. They're basically really beautiful, and I'm really having a good time on the first part of my adventure with my dad. I absolutely love to go on trips like this with my father. He is really one of my best friends, so I was having a great time. The trees eventually become more dense, and some of the snow is falling off of the trees and hitting us on the head. And it's a little bit annoying because you have to keep brushing your hat 
just to try and keep dry. But it's fine and again adds to some of the adventure. Now we hike for quite a while and eventually make it out to the spot that we're going to camp in. The snow has actually picked up a little bit and my dad sets to work and he made me help with the tent, not only to learn the importance of it but also because it's important for staying warm. Now one thing I was really looking forward to and my dad especially was the night sky. We were going to see some beautiful stars out here because we're far away from most populations and miles away from worrying about light pollution. It's something I hadn't really experienced before living in a populated city, so this was a treat. We eventually get up the tent and go inside for a while, and my dad then starts a fire. It doesn't take him too long because he has all the appropriate equipment with him, but he's very cautious to make sure the fire's going nice and strong. He has plenty of firewood around, so this is really good and I know it's going to be more than enough to keep us warm. The fire eventually melts some of the snow around where we are and it makes it very warm so I'm really grateful for this. We sit there talking about different stories and my dad said hey look up at the stars you never know if you're going to see a shooting star. And unfortunately I didn't see any that night but that's no worries whatsoever. I'm just really glad to be out here and have some bonding time with my father. So the first night goes as planned and everything's good and we actually have a small heater in the tent so we're really warm and toasty. We wake up the next day and everything's as normal. We set out where we're going to hike a little bit further for the day and see some of the views that are around. And this place is really beautiful. The hills kind of look a bit mountainy and again it's something that's a relatively new experience for me. So I'm really excited to see it all. So we set out further and further and get to a point where my dad says that we need to head back just in case we get lost and I completely understood. Now while we're there, my dad can hear what sounds like a wolf hailing. It seems to be a lone one but it really frightens my dad. Seeing my father scared actually scares me a lot too. He said, son, we better head back. He didn't have to explain to me why it was, and I was pretty glad to be heading back now. I didn't actually hear too much, to be honest, at the time of the wolves. It was more my dad picked up on it, and I guess I kind of know this, but not really. But it was pretty creepy. So, we continue our hike and eventually make it back to the camp, and my dad once again gets a fire going. We cook some food over the fire and again we're just having a really good time basically and we decide that we're going to head in for the night. Now throughout the night we can definitely hear some kind of animal howling. Now I know this might sound weird but I really don't know what animal this was. I realised too my dad seemed relatively unsure of exactly what this was and again it kind of worried me. I was very worried about wolves coming to get me even though that realistically it's quite unlikely that it would ever happen. Especially not with the way that we're armed but I don't know. It's just something kind of creepy that you don't really experience often in life unless you're in those kind of situations where you're in the middle of nowhere like that. So anyway, we ended up falling asleep after not too long and waking up again in the night to realise that the fire's been put out. That's really odd, my dad says. Did you leave any water around? I say no. Of course not. And my dad looks a little bit worried and confused. We definitely had the fire going and more than enough wood in it, but it seems to have gone out almost. It looks like somebody's done it on purpose, but we're pretty sure this is some kind of accident and maybe I left water next to it that got knocked over. Not to worry. We head out again for another day of adventuring. Now on this particular day, we did some more hiking and sightseeing, and we actually tried to do some ice fishing, which I can tell you was pretty unsuccessful. So, we start heading back to the tent on the way home. As we get back to the tent, it's pretty much the same thing again. We basically put everything away and get the fire going, cook some food, then set a whim for the night. Now I'm awoken at some point in the night, confused as to why I can see my dad outside. I can just about see the silhouette that's 
portraying a shadow onto the tent. I don't think much of it and fall asleep again thinking maybe my dad's just went out to use the toilet or maybe he's worried about the fire. The following morning, I woke up and I said to my dad, Dad, what were you doing last night? He says, what do you mean? I wasn't doing anything. I say, yeah, what were you doing to the fire outside? And now suddenly my dad looks really concerned. He looks at me and says, no son, I've been here the whole time. What happened? And I explain what happened and he seems somewhat worried. He says, son, it was probably just something in your imagination, so try not to worry about it too much, but worry me it did. I don't really see my dad too scared often, but there was definitely something off. I had certainly seen somebody the previous night. I don't know, maybe it's just where I wasn't used to being out there and I was a little bit uncomfortable and I was just imagining things. But this was pretty creepy to say the very least. So anyway, we set out once again and everything's as normal like usual. As we set out, we basically come into one of our last days and we're just having a normal conversation as usual. While we're there, we stop and we can see somebody up on the bridge line just further away from where we are. It's quite hard to see but they seem to have a really large brownie colour coat on which is really odd. We wave and say hello but there's no reply. My dad seems to get a little bit concerned at this and tells me that we need to head back now. So, a little bit bored now, we're just sitting there with the fire going, making food, not really saying anything. And my dad seems more worried than before. He says he's going to investigate something and not to worry, and I say okay, and wait for my dad to return four or five minutes later, which he does. I say, dad, what happened? And he says nothing, just get ready for sleep. My dad gets the fire going even stronger, and we settle in for the night. We fall asleep and wake up the next morning to realise that the fires went out once again. Definitely by water which is really bizarre. It can't have possibly been from the snow or the trees because there wasn't much around there. Especially not in the spot that we're in. But how did it go out? This is really bizarre. Now we get our things together and head out for the final day's adventure. We once again go to do some lake fishing and really want to try and get some fish this time because it's something I haven't really experienced many other times and I've never caught anything fishing and my dad loves fishing so he keeps on and on going on about it but I tell him how boring it can be but he will not listen. His father also did fishing too so that's definitely why he liked it so much. So we surprisingly actually catch one single tiny fish. And I joked to my dad about it, but he's eager for us to get it back to our campsite and put it on the fire. And that's exactly what we do. So we make it all the way back again, and we start the fire, and everything's as normal. We eat the fish, then we decide that we should just start heading home the next morning earlier than usual because we're both a bit bored now, which is completely fine. As we're sitting there, just roasting some food over the fire, we can see a strange figure once again, just off in the distance. It's a silhouette of a person wearing some kind of coat which kind of looks like a very dark colour against the background, but this is basically just because of how dark it is now. Now the stars look absolutely beautiful at this point, but they're not really casting enough light down on us for us to be able to see well. But it's definitely a person there. I joked to my dad saying it's probably a snowman but my dad doesn't really seem to be in the mood for jokes. He then says hey and shouts out hey again and waves but there's no reply. That's when my dad says that he's going to investigate a little bit and I trail slowly behind him. We can see whatever this figure is holding up some kind of stick to the sky. Now what's really weird in this moment is we both realise the clothes that this person's wearing. The clothes do not look like somebody that's from the 21st century. They look very primitive and all of his clothes are from some kind of animal hides. And how he wasn't cold, I'll never know. Because we were cold enough with our new high-tech gear on, but this was really weird. 
It looked like somebody coming from a fancy dress or costume shop, if you guys call it that. But why would he be out here like this? Again, we called out, but we don't get any reply whatsoever. And we probably get about 40 or so feet from him. And we can see that this is a much older man just staring at us, still holding up some kind of stick into the air. That's when my dad turns around and says, son, you know what to do. And I did. I didn't need any further instructions as we start trudging back through the snow again. My dad's holding my hand and he won't take his eyes off of this person. He says, son, do not take your eyes off of him. If he moves one inch, tell me. And I start to panic a little bit and start putting everything away. I eventually do so and that figure is still there, having only moved very slightly. We get everything together and I tell my dad and he says it's time to go. My dad doesn't even bother putting out the fire and we start the slow trek back with only our torches to guide us. Luckily there's enough light on the ground from the snow illuminated for us to be able to see where we're going and we start the trek back. While walking I keep looking over periodically and that guy is still there, barely moving, until eventually, he turns away into the woods. This makes us pick up our pace a little bit because we can't really see what direction he's going in, and I kid you not, we can hear the sounds of wolves once again. My dad still has his lights on because he thinks it's probably going to scare the wolves a bit and he has his weapon ready. Luckily we make it back to the car and everything's uneventful at this point. We quickly get into the car, wait for a good 5 or 10 minutes which has got to be the most terrifying part while he's able to get the engine going and the car ready to drive. During these moments my dad tells me, please tell me if you see anything son and I promise him and we have the doors locked. My dad still has his weapon in hand at this point and thank god the car comes to life. My dad slowly turns it round and gets the car onto the road and we start making the way back home. I say dad dad what did you see? And my dad tells me whatever he saw was definitely not a person. He then reveals to me that when he went off earlier in the day and before he had seen the exact same figure that looked terribly dated and out of place for the situation they are in. He said it almost looks like he's bumped into some kind of time traveller, or we've bumped into them. We are both very scared by this experience, and my dad made me promise that I wouldn't say anything to my mum, because he knew that she would never let us out there again. Now, we never did go back to there ever again afterwards. Looking back on it now and speaking to him more recently, He's revealed to me how scared he was at the time, and that he didn't want to show me how scared he was at the time, but he was really feeling it. Now, I'm certain we bumped into some kind of weird spirit there that we weren't really supposed to see, and we were trespassing on their land and they were not happy about it. It still remains one of the weirdest experiences of my life. Now, I've always thought I had some kind of connection with the paranormal, whether I wanted it or not, and one of those actually come from being on site during my job. Now as part of my job, I had to go every so often to check out some environmental thing. I won't bore you with the details, but I had to check markers at certain points. Mind you, this is well into my adult life, so I wasn't as scared being out in the forest or parts of it, relatively isolated from others. I always had the help of the other people working the same job as me, but it would take them a while to get there, but luckily we had our radios to stay in contact with each other and this always made me feel a lot more safe than not. Now I was on my way to one of these specific markers, and as I'm walking I stopped dead in my tracks. Just in the misty October air above where I'm standing, I can see some people over the hill. Now once again, this is just like what happened when I was younger with my dad, so I had some paranoia from it, and I decided it would be best for me to stay outside and not necessarily investigate immediately. I quickly come off of the main road that I'm on, and face away from the sun and quickly go into the woods a bit. 
I stand so that I'm parallel with one of the trees, and just sort of out of sight. I wait for a good four minutes and nothing happens, but something was telling me do not move, and wait and see what happens, and that was just what I did. After another good five or ten minutes of this, I eventually see more figures coming up the road. They get closer and closer and they seem to be armed, causing me to duck down a little bit. Because of the mist, I can't really see exactly who they are or what they're wearing, but they eventually come closer and closer, and I think maybe there's some people lost from a party because they're carrying some kind of big swords and have weird shaped helmets on them and long beards. They get a little bit closer and I can see that what they're wearing is armour and animal clothing. I immediately have flashbacks to what me and my father saw that time. I then realise these look like warriors from a prehistoric time. But the strangest part is I can't see anything below their knees. It's almost like they're hovering through the ground, which is the strangest part. At first I'm convinced that maybe this is just from the mist and it's kind of obstructing them, but then I realise it's not the case. Literally, it's like they're walking through the ground, which makes me realise these aren't real people. There's probably about seven or eight of them in total, and they don't take notice of me because where I am, and my god, I'm too scared to make it known. I wait for a couple of seconds and look around, just to see if there's any others I have to worry about. Now they're in absolute silence at this point. I turn back and they've vanished, literally like they didn't exist in the first place. Now the craziest thing about this is there would have been no possible way they could have hidden in that time, so I know something was definitely up. Now after this experience, I immediately went back home and told my dad after my shift what had happened. I didn't tell any of the other workers initially because I didn't want them to think I was off my head, but my dad said, son, where was this? And I explained the exact location, and he then revealed to me something that I couldn't believe. The path that I was standing on was once a medieval road that was discovered not too long ago and was buried about two or so feet beneath the path that had been laid more recently. So that would have made perfect sense as to why I couldn't see from their knees below, which is exactly what I saw. I think that maybe I have some kind of connection to the spiritual world, where I can see moments in time that others can't. Now I haven't told any of my colleagues about what happened in this story per se because, you know, I can't really be bothered with too many questions. If this had have happened and my dad didn't tell me that about the road before, I wouldn't have really questioned it, but knowing this, I can only possibly believe that it was paranormal. While working as a ranger, I'd made some really good friends, and even when we were off duty, sometimes we'd all go out camping together. One of my favourite places that we'd go camping was deep in the woods somewhere, and it had some cabins there that you could all share and use. We decided to share a couple because it'd kind of be a better laugh than if we were in individual ones, and it would save us some money, so that's what we did. Now none of us had actually been out to this spot before, so we were hoping it was going to be quite desolate, and the day that we arrived, it was. We were really happy to see no other cars in the car park, but we still had a bit further to go to make sure that nobody else was here. We had to hike for about a good four or so hours, so this meant we brought lots of water with us. The journey there was basically uneventful, and we just sharing different stories. One ranger shared a really weird story about how he saw some lights in the sky that he couldn't really describe. He said apparently one night while he was on duty, he thought he was looking at stars through his binoculars when suddenly, one of them started to move, then a few more of them moved, and they suddenly vanished. We're all making jokes about his age and him losing it because he's someone who likes to go on about aliens and stuff all the time, but I didn't really believe it, 
thinking maybe it was some kind of satellites or fireflies or god knows what. He would tell us to knock it off, and he would get a little bit annoyed so we tried not to joke about it too much with him. Some of the rangers had been doing it for years and some of the others were relatively new like me. I was new to the job but not necessarily new to being outdoors. I'd been a boy scout previously and I had a couple of scary experiences of my own. One that I shared that was really weird was when we all went out on a trip one day with the scouts camping. I had to get up and use the bathroom. You had to go a little bit of a way to get to the outhouse and I didn't mind too much because at the time nothing scary ever really happened to me and I felt pretty invincible with my scout uniform on. Yeah I don't know why but hey, that was my mindset at the time. So I just got finished doing my business and I heard someone go hey, hey. I stopped dead in my tracks because I knew nobody else had come with me. They kept on saying hey. And I looked up and I could just about make out somebody at the tree line wearing all black. The voice was very deep and clearly this was an adult and he said hey, and my name, do you want to play hide and seek? I said no, I should really be getting back now. He says come on, your friends are all playing it too, you're missing out. Now I knew for a fact this wasn't possible because all of my friends are back at the campsite so I just turned and ran. I ran all the way back and smartly, or not so smartly, I immediately told the other guys what had happened and they all started panicking. I then had the sense to tell one of the elders there who was leading us and he very quickly made us walk all of the way back to the car and called the police on the way. I never found out exactly what happened from that but it definitely put some paranoia into me naturally. Then. Another one of the scouts actually come up with a somewhat similar story to my own. He said he was actually playing tag this time, to which I joked, you are probably the person out there, and everybody laughed. He said, apparently, they're all playing tag when he seems to get lost out in the middle of nowhere. He said for some reason he didn't panic at all, but he felt strangely drawn to keep on walking further and further into the forest. He said he eventually saw some other people just by a lake and went over to say hey, but something made him stop just before he could actually reach them. For whatever reason, and what he still doesn't know to this day, he decided to duck down and hide. And he said that while hiding, he realised that they were going to pass by him so he basically buried himself amongst the foliage and tried to cover his skin as much as he could and just get out of sight. Apparently, while walking past, he overheard them saying, I told you this isn't a good place to hide a body, to which the other responded, I'm telling you no one's out here and it's completely fine. Now apparently, he waited here for a good hour or so before eventually emerging. Apparently, he sprinted back to the site and told them what happened, and nobody believed him. The craziest part is they stayed there and finished the trip and they went home like normal, and he never reported it any further, thinking nobody would believe him. So yeah, I guess that kind of sets the tone for the kind of stories that we're telling each other. Now, I felt insanely confident being out there with so many different rangers, including myself. I felt invincible being out there on my own with that ranger uniform. Even though we didn't have it on this time, I still had that air of invincibility. So we eventually make it to the campsite in the cabins, and luckily nobody else is in sight. Apparently there was potentially going to be one other person that was going to stay there with us, but they ended up bailing so they weren't sure if they were going to come or not, and that was fine. So we set him for the night and made ourselves cosy. We had a good time and eventually got a campfire going and made some food. Now. While we were eating, I looked back at the cabin and I said hey, I think the other guys turned up because we can see a silhouette in one of the other cabins. I waved but I don't get a response. I think maybe the person was facing the other way or just didn't take notice of me and didn't think much of it. Now what was strange the following day is literally none of us saw this person re-emerge from the cabin and we didn't hear much of anything. 
We periodically say hey when we walk past the cabin hoping for someone to emerge but it was really bizarre. Eventually curiosity got the better of one of the others and they went to go and knock for him and found the door locked. That was when we realised that nobody was in there and nothing had changed since we'd last walked past it. Now I think maybe just maybe my mind was playing tricks on me but I was pretty convinced I had seen someone in there and I think this is really odd. So the next few days go completely uneventful and we have a great time fishing and just hiking and taking in some of the beautiful scenery around us. It truly was beautiful and it's something that I really recommend people do, getting out into the great outdoors more if possible. So we head in for another night. As we're all laying there talking, getting ready to fall asleep, I hear a strange banging sound coming from just under my bed. It's really weird, it sounds like somebody's hitting it with a fist, but it's not possible. There's nothing below us. I think maybe it's some kind of animal that's tried to break in, or maybe it's the other guy outside, so I quickly jump up. I go outside with one of my other friends and we search the perimeter but don't find anything. That's pretty odd. We all think maybe it was just some animal that we didn't expect to be here and set a whim for the night. And we wake up the next day like normal. So, coming towards the end of our trip, we have a usual day of hiking ahead of us. And we're just generally having a good time relaxing. One of us has a guitar with us and he's playing some beautiful music and it sounds like the notes are reflecting off of the water near us, which was really beautiful I have to say. So, we eventually get the fire going again and we're all telling ghost stories to each other. One of us is telling us about how apparently he saw a headless person when he was much younger on holiday somewhere in Europe, and again, we don't really believe him but you can see he's getting really freaked out. He says apparently he was asleep at the holiday resort with his parents when they thought one of the hotel guests was outside or maybe staff member. Apparently his mum went to ask what was wrong and a figure turned around that was literally headless and seemed to vanish. Yeah I didn't really believe it much either and we all joked about this and once again set a whim for the night. Now I don't know why, something just felt different this time. Everything was normal around us but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Something just felt off. Now just as we're settling in, I slowly fall asleep and I'm awoken by a loud banging sound. I think it's one of the other guys who's outside who hasn't been able to get in so I quickly get up. The banging then intensifies and is slamming on the doors and windows. I look around and I account for everybody still inside. I don't know what the sounds are. I think this is really odd, but just as I go to get up again, I can hear the winds really picking up outside. Convinced now that the other person's actually showed up in the other cabin and wants to get in, I shout out, hey, all right, I'm coming, I'm coming, and go to open the door, but it's locked. Now I've realised that something's really up. One of my friends says, hey guys, listen. You can hear the banging coming once again from under the bed that I was staying in. None of us know what to do in this moment and my friend looks at me, absolutely terrified. None of us know what to do and yet all of us are prepared for being in situations we aren't comfortable with. It's almost a surreal moment where you don't want to move, but you feel like staying still is not a good option. This went on for a good five more minutes with the banging sounds, and eventually the wind stops, but the banging sounds continue. It seems like it's impossibly dark outside, until eventually it stops. We all remain in complete silence now waiting, just to hear if anything else is going to happen. Nothing does, and the bravest amongst us, one of my friends, goes and tries the door again and it opens. And the craziest thing? Everything's completely as it should be. And he looks around and there's no signs of any life whatsoever. 
He comes back in and locks the door behind himself and closes all of the blinds and the sheets covering the windows. Something is definitely off now. One of us decides to stay on guard while the others go to sleep and one of my friends switches with him after a couple of hours. I was very grateful for this because I was so exhausted from the adrenaline of what had happened that I needed to sleep. I must have only slept for about 20 minutes but god I was grateful for it. The next morning we woke up in silence and none of us really said anything to each other. We all start packing up our things immediately and cancel all the remaining plans for the day. I start to pack up my things and as I move the mattress to get something I placed under the bed, I see a red thing that I didn't notice before. I move the mattress out of the way and eventually pull the bed up and I can see a circle with a pentagram painted in what seems to be blood directly below my bed. I say my god, guys, guys, and all of the other guys turn around and see what I'm seeing. I'm not joking, I was literally sleeping directly above some kind of god knows what animal or person's blood in the shape of a pentagram. We didn't need to see anything else and we immediately start the hike back. I felt absolutely violated not realising that I was sleeping above this thing. And maybe that was the source of all of the strange things that had happened the following night. I didn't know. I was just furious at the person that we were renting from from not telling us that about the cabins. We eventually get back and I immediately make contact with him. and. Apparently, he knew nothing about it and he said he was going to send one of his guys over there to investigate and clear it up. We agreed that we would never go back to that site again. God knows what happened before or after we were there, but we were happier not knowing. I'm a long haul truck driver and I've seen a couple of weird things that I couldn't really explain. However, there was one which really takes the crown as being the weirdest, and I think you'll understand why. So I've been doing quite a long drive across state actually, and I was relatively tired of the drive. I needed to rest, so I quickly find a gas station which I can pull over into, and ask if I can park in the back and just shut my eyes for a while, which they agreed. Waking up, I'm feeling far more refreshed now, and I set off again. I don't make it too much further before eventually I see somebody at the side of the road. They seem like they're in a lot of trouble and I stop to help. Now they're crouching over like they're injured, but when they turn, they're wearing a clown full mask. Now as I stop, I do the window up quickly realising something's wrong. I look in the rear view mirror and I suddenly realise that there are more people moving behind, at least three of them. And then, somebody else pops up holding something in the road. I kid you not, there's somebody standing dressed as a clown in the middle of the road holding something that looks pointy. I immediately ram onto the accelerator and I aim right for this person. I'm kind of ashamed to admit it, but I don't care if they got hurt at this point. They quickly jump over to the side of the road and I speed off as quick as I can in my truck. I look again behind just to see if they're following me and I see a group of five people all dressed pretty much the same standing there. They then begin to wave me off as I drive off into the distance. I then drove for a good five hours almost without stopping until eventually I make it to another big rest stop where I pass out. I still don't know who they were to this day, or whether I was targeted specifically, but my god did it scare the life out of me. Last year, I was out in Colorado exploring campsites near Boulder. Got into camp around 10pm, accompanied by a few flurries, no problem. I grew up in New England winters so it didn't really make a difference for me, but I also wasn't having a fire due to the restrictions so I got my SUV ready 
for sleep and got cozy with some Netflix. I was about to drift off to sleep when I hear something outside. Now I'm used to the vulnerability of camping and various sounds at night. This was and still is unexplainable to me. Now I hear crying, really disturbing crying which seemed close to my car. For reference, this road has a bunch of random dispersed camp spots but none of which I'm too close to or have ever heard crying and I shouldn't be close enough to hear that. I mute my Netflix and stay alert. The crying slurs into higher pitch laughter and then slurs into low pitch laughter. Now it's hard to exactly say what it was but it sounded like almost laughter but crying. I think god what? The cry laughing was not like a hyena and had a distinctive human quality to it. Now this was definitely bizarre to say the very least. Now I've overheard some hikers talking but this was different. Maybe they were cry laughing. This actually scared me more than an animal. I've seen moose before and for the record the campsite had a lookout and I don't know. They never spotted any here. So back to my situation. The cry laughter moved and increased in frequency. Now it's getting quite weird. What I mean by this is that it cry laughed to the right of me, then cry laughed near the back of the car, then impossibly far out and back again. No way a person or animal could have moved so quickly without shuffling noises. It was almost surreal sounding. Now, hearing wildly unfamiliar weepings and sounds is really the stuff of nightmares for me. Now, the weeping seemed to be disembodied and I was freaked. I told to myself, breathe like you know how to. You've got to move. I had a thought that maybe there was somebody living in the brush out there who'd lost it only came out past 10 p.m. in snow and pranced around cry laughing with a rock outside the car waiting to smash into the window as soon as I looked out, but that seems unlikely. I was nearly froze but heard that breathing. I really managed to get myself to move a little bit and think and especially forcing my own breathing helped with that. I double locked my car doors hoping that the beep would alert the intruder that I was awake and unhappy. I got out from my sleeping bag, even though I feared the movement would be sensed, and hopped into the driver's seat. I wanted to vomit, breathe, but turned the car on, the headlights and the brights. Then I took down the sun visor covering the windshield only partially to see my moose friend on the opposite side of the road, munching away at veg. Okay, are the weeping sounds coming from the moose? I'm not convinced, especially not because it's eating. Now, it took about 5 minutes to get to the end of the road, and I parked before hitting the main road to collect myself. I realised I left my propane, it was like $9 and I didn't want to waste it so I took another deep breath. I decided to head back and survey the area. Certainly, I'd be able to catch anyone crouched in the bushes if it was a person and I could just drive away. I had my headlamp and the brights on when I drove to the campsite, again taking a deep breath. I jumped out of the car to grab the propane and claim the space or stand my ground, that type of thing. But nothing. I can't explain it, so the stand my ground energy was short lived. It's after 11 at this point and I'm just tired and uneasy now, so I'm out. On to a backup spot. And of course it's hard to claim down. All I've got as a possible exclamation is a super calm moose started making the sounds but I don't buy it. I really don't know what this could have been or whether it's a crazy demented person out of there. But what's really bizarre is the way that the sound moved away so quickly and then reappeared again, impossibly quick. Now in 2017, one of my good friends who lived in Portland, OR, was offered a new job in Long Island, New York and took it. 
He asked me to fly out so I could road trip with him across the country so he wouldn't have to be alone. Of course I agreed. I flew out from JFK to PDX. We have many stories from this road trip, but none stranger than what happened to us in Ohio. After a few days on the road, we had entered Ohio. I wish I remembered exactly where this took place, but honestly I don't recall. All I know is that it was past Zanzville, heading east. My buddy was driving as I was reaching towards the ground, trying to grab my phone that I had dropped. He suddenly said, this old lady next to us keeps pointing at me. I think she wants me to pull over. I was always paranoid and saying, no, keep driving. But he pulled over. A black Escalade with plates from Alaska pulled over in front of us. Out comes this lady who's no younger than 60 saying, I'm glad I got to you boys when I did. Your tires are smoking. Now, it's important to note that we're towing his Camary with U-Haul that we're in. Side note. This happened in Sandsville. Now we got stuck in the parking lot. Couldn't have found any backup so had to rehitch his car. We realised later that he left the emergency brake on. Anyway, after she said this we looked at each other completely puzzled and immediately turned to the tyres. They were absolutely smoking like they had bullet holes in them. Now this is where it gets weird. Not even a few seconds after we kneeled down to inspect the tyres and she was gone. No goodbye and no sound of the car. Just vanished. The whole interaction of her getting out of the car couldn't have been more than 15 seconds. I didn't have a doubt in my mind she had vanished and I looked at my friend and he was very pal, confirming what I was thinking. I don't know for sure what could have happened if we didn't stop. I don't know if the car would have caught fire or something, but I'm not sure if she was an angel sent there to protect us but the whole situation was very bizarre. Working as a ranger, you always get the odd thing you can't explain, but sometimes they really go beyond the ordinary and into depths that I don't even know. There was one particular thing that we were doing for training where that we all stayed in the same little bedroom together pretty much. I guess it was like group bonding and we we're split into different groups but mine had two other people in it and we're kind of in like bunk beds but they're more spread out than bunk beds. What was beautiful about this particular one is that you could actually see through the ceiling. They had kind of like a clear plastic sheet at the top which was actually really nice and if it wasn't rainy you'd have a really good view of the stars and things like that. The window wasn't too wide, just really long and went all the way across, I guess to create natural light or something, but it was beautiful for stargazing. Now on the second day as I'm laying there, half asleep, I suddenly jolt awake and realise what I'm looking at's wrong. I can see somebody staring at me. I scream to wake up the other guys and say, look, look, do you see that? And then, one of my ranger friends jumps out of bed and stands up and the other does the same and I bolt up. We literally see somebody dressed in Victorian clothes floating slowly across from one side of the screen to the other without making a sound, literally floating. I don't see how anybody else could have done this because they should have surely fell through. And why were they floating? Even if it was somebody using a tree and a cable, there's no way they could have glided across so perfectly. Now, again, I'm not probably the most brave ranger, but I literally screamed. I flicked on the lights and this woke up all the other rangers in the nearby cabin things they were staying in. They all come over and they could tell something was wrong immediately by the expressions on our face. We then started explaining what had happened and I can see one of them roll their eyes and all the others go back to bed. That left all of us in our cabin remaining, just staring at each other. As you can imagine, we didn't sleep well that night, and luckily for us, it was the last day we had to be there. And I was sure glad that that was the case. I still get spooked out thinking about it to this day. Now back in the mid-80s, 
We were driving through Tennessee on our way to visit friends in Texas. My mom was driving, I, a teenager, was navigating by using a paper map. These were the days before cell phones and GPS. We made it past Nashville on the I-40 pretty late at night. We're maybe an hour outside of the city. I'm charting our progress, old school pencil and paper. We pass an exit, mark it. A minute later, a summer thunderstorm hit. Literally all of the visibility has really dropped now to practically zero. All the traffic's gone to a crawl. And we decide to pull off for the next possible exit and find a motel to spend the night because there's no way we're making significant process in the storm. Slow white knuckle driving ensues. An exit looms off on the right. No signage we can see in the downpour and we take it. At the top of the exit ramp, we turn right towards a brilliantly lit up gas station. Left turn was onto an overpass crossing I-40, no lights, from that side of the interstate. On the dinky little road now, to our right, is a gas station that we're rapidly passing. To our left, and back behind some trees, what appeared to be a hotel. But you couldn't make out much of the signage in the rain. We drove past the gas station before we realised, really, that the road just ended ahead. The gas station was the only building on this side of the road. It went from one and a half lane paved to one lane gravel to tired dirt track and grass everywhere. Now, we passed the gas station and there's only one turn off from this road. It was on our left. We took it and tried to back off and turn around back to the gas station. Unfortunately, the paved slope of that narrow one-way driveway turned off steeply into a mud pit. No backing up. My mum put the car into a low gear, turned hard, and headed back from the gravel road through the mud. We almost made it out, but we ended up getting mired. The front passenger tyre caught on the corner of an exposed concrete storm drain, maybe three feet from the road or so. Now out of the car, into the rain and mud, we walked to the gas station. The place was spotless, super bright, had two young men behind the counter. What sounds like one of Elvis's songs playing on the radio. Attendant's first word is, do you get stuck in the mud? And they said it's super enthusiastic. I mean, way, way too enthusiastic. Also, these night clerks were dressed in suits and they appear to be about 30 years out of date. The whole place is weird. Admitting we gotten stuck, we now ask them, is there a tow company we could call? They pulled out a phone book and started talking to each other. Now it's not a Nashville phone book, but like some little township. Population couldn't have been more than a hundred from the handful of white pages, but the book had dozens of yellow pages of nothing but tow truck companies like literally hundreds of them for this small town, too small to even appear on a map. Attendants had a friendly debate about whose turn it was to come get the car out of the mud, decided to skip over the company who was theoretical next because there had been some kind of problem with the last time they were called for a tow, made a decision on who to call, and let my mum use their phone. More weirdness. Creepiness intensifies. Still storming, though less now, the tow truck arrives maybe 15 minutes later, brilliant white, not a speck of dirt or mud on it. I've seen vehicles in a new car lot that are actually dirtier, and two young men in the truck also dressed nicely when they step out, freshly polished patent leather shoes without a drop of mud on them, starch white shirts, paper hats and bow ties, it was definitely weird to see. Now we hike across the street to the next door to the mud pit where the car is stuck. The tow truck guys are horrified. They almost got out of the mud, they say to each other repeatedly. The subtext from their shock tone is clear. No one must have ever, ever escaped the mud pit on their own. These people will have to take some sort of action to make sure nobody else gets as close as we did to escaping. They tow our car out, easy. We get back to the gas station, pay the drivers for their service, 
tow truck drivers let gas station attendants know Mum and I almost made it out of the mud on our own. The attendants are horrified and shocked by this. By now, getting huge uncanny weird vibes from all four of these men. And not just them, but the whole place is too clean and brightly lit, and too weirdly out of date. It was surprisingly good for a small town, and it just didn't make sense. Almost perfect, in fact. We are definitely in creepy town. If these guys were humans, they were definitely seriously off. If they weren't, they almost had their ordinary human act down to a pat. The tow truck driver drives off. Attendants turn, all friendly again, and ask mum if we're gonna stay the night in the hotel across the road. They're so excited that we might spend the night there talking about how great it is. My mum and I made non-committal noises. Return to the car. I tell mum we are not staying the night here and she wholeheartedly agrees. The rain is finally letting up. Drive straight out to the interstate. Did not pass go. Did not ever go nearby this creepy old motel again. Drive down the I-40 to the very next exit. It was maybe five miles. Pull off, spend the night in a kind of dodgy but ordinary motel. But at least it's not the Bates Motel, we joke. The rest of the trip goes well then. Several days later, on my way home, my mum and I decide that we would really like to see the creepy old town in the daylight again. It couldn't have been more weird than that, could it? Heading back up the I-40, we pass the exit where we actually did spend the night on the way down. Start looking for the exit to the creepy town. Should have been about five miles ago, along with an overpass. We get five miles down, no pass, no exit, no overpass. Five more miles before we eventually find the exit off the I-40. It's the one I had marked as being right before the storm first hit. Now, I've travelled many times on the I-40 since, often remarking that, hey, there's the exit where that weird storm should have been. I still don't know where it is to this day, and it almost is like it's just vanished. A long time ago, my brother had an office near the Canadian border in Washington state. I often had to travel over there to help the staff train. Now being a guy in my late 20s single, I like to get away for a few days. I also like to make a few extra bucks by volunteering to go wherever there was help needed. I would usually fly up there, but some occasions when I needed to bring equipment or materials down, I would drive. This one particular time was about 17 years ago. We bought a bunch of equipment in a wholesale and needed to deliver this and some other odds and go up to our office in WA state. Of course, everybody knew I'd volunteer for the drive. I was told to drive a box truck up there and leave it and fly back. Prior to this, I would drive a company car or SUV, but no worries, the box truck wasn't that big and probably was about the same size as one of the rental U-Haul trucks. I always preferred to start my driving journey towards the end of the day mostly because I'm one of those people who likes night driving. For the majority of my journey it's uneventful. I only stopped at gas stations and the occasional rest stop to take care of nature. At some point near the California-Oregon border is when things start to get bad. It was approximately one o'clock in the morning and I had stopped at a rest area, probably the last one on the California side. On the far side, I don't remember seeing some truckers or anything, but basically the parking lot was empty. By this point, I wasn't really thinking of anything creepy or out of the ordinary. I got out of my truck, go into the restroom and take care of business. I wash up a bit and take my sweet time stretching my legs, but when I exit the restroom and walk over to my truck, I noticed a vehicle parked next to mine. I was literally like, this whole parking lot and this person pulls up next to me. Oh well, I jump in my truck and continue on the journey. For about another 10 or 20 miles down the freeway, my truck starts acting weird. Some of the interior lights start flickering. I don't really think anything of it. A little while later, all of the lights in the vehicle goes out. 
I mean interior lights, running lights and headlights. At this point it's about 2am and in some weird area of Oregon that I don't know which is heavily wooded. I can't find a flashlight in the truck cabin. I get so angry not sure of being scared to be driving 60 miles an hour in the middle of what seemed like the scene from the Towers of the Dark Side but I pound my fist on the dashboard and scream almost instantly everything come back on. It felt like a frenzy. At the next upcoming rest stop, I decided to pull over again, maybe from adrenaline or that I had to pee. I jumped out of the truck and went to the restroom, although this time I didn't take that long inside the restroom and walk back out of the truck. I remember my thoughts saying that I should stay inside, or at least wait before I attempt to continue at dawn. As I walk up to my truck, I see an older guy, kind of heavy set with grey hair. He's standing next to my truck. I didn't see his vehicle near mine, but just assumed that he was outstretching his legs. As I walk up, he starts a conversation about the weather or something, and a very light snow starts falling, but not the kind of stuff that stays on the ground. I wasn't paying too much attention to him because my first impression is that he's just a lonely old guy that wants to chit chat. Then he said something that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. He's looking at my truck and says, uh, you got any mechanical problems? I stopped in my tracks and felt blood rush into my head. I just said no and keep driving and trying to stay away from him. He then tells me that he doesn't live too far away and I'm welcome to join him for a hot coffee and if I need anything I can even sleep there on the sofa. That kind of gave me the creeps but I'm thinking to myself if I need, I could use this guy. I thought I'm younger and stronger and not afraid to defend myself, so basically the conversation eventually ends with, well, I, I better get back on the road before the snow starts to really fall. As I'm driving away, I see that he's walking behind the restroom, so I think to myself, what the heck was that about? My mind is racing and retracting my last few steps. And how did this guy know I was having electrical problems with my truck? I suddenly think back to the rest stop in California and that the car was parked next to the truck. Could he have done something to my wiring while I was taking my sweet time in the John? A few more miles down the road, no new issues with my electrics, but I decide at the next gas station I'm going to stop. So I pull up to a gas station in Oregon. Now they don't let you pump your own gas so I have to wait for another attendant and then decide to go in and get a drink. I paid and as I was waiting for the fueling in my tank I walk around to the truck and look for signs of tampering up near the front fender and I see some smears but not really sure if it's from the road, snow or what. I just tell myself okay you're freaking yourself out so now I just jump in my truck and pull out of the gas station as quick as I can make a turn around get back to the side where on the ramp I can actually see what's happening. I eventually make it to the exit and I see a car parked in the corner and somebody sitting inside. I think to myself I'm just freaking out seeing shadows in every corner. It's just a few hours until dawn maybe in the morning. I'm gonna laugh about this. I'm being followed and set up maybe. Did I interrupt that old guy when I come out of the restroom so fast. Was he actually waiting for the right time and place to kill me? Well, as I continue driving on the snow, it starts to get a little more concerning. I didn't grow up in this area, or one that has a lot of snow, so I'm not too experienced with this, and I know when to look for hazards, however. But I look out of my rearview side mirror, and see a pair of headlights trailing behind me, which is odd because most drivers pass up, and this person is following me. I'm already going well under the speed limit, but I drive a bit more slowly to try and let them pass, but they don't go anywhere. At some point, I'm getting closer to a larger city, Portland. It's still dark, and snow is slightly falling now. I decide to pull over again, and maybe the car will go around. I quickly exit, 
and I make it towards a freeway and a gas station is not too far away with a patrol car parked over there. I immediately pull up to the cops and get out. This is a lady officer and I start making conversation with her about the snow and expected conditions. I'm thinking about telling her about the car behind me but all of a sudden, I felt silly. What was I going to say? I think I'm being followed by an old man. She's kind of nice and we're talking for a bit and she says to me where am I going and coming from. She then suggests that I stop for the night and starts to tell me about the dangers of driving sleepy. I took a look around and said yeah, I will stop for the night. But she tells me that if I go down the road a couple of blocks near the 7-Eleven there's a motel. I look around and don't see the car anymore. I decide that I will stop for the night and go in for a sleep. As I pull up to the motel, I decide to park the truck away from this area and I ended up going quite far behind the motel so that I don't have to be seen from the road. I go into the motel room as quickly as I can and lock the door. I can honestly say that I didn't get much rest. I watched TV and nodded off and I would be wide awake at every sound. My mind kept racing back to recalling all of the events before the California border to my conversations with the police. Maybe he saw me talking to the cops and decided to take off. Maybe he was waiting for me to pull over at another rest stop and complete his plan, whatever it is. But why would a stranger invite another stranger to his house in the middle of the night at a rest stop? Why did he ask me if I was having problems with the truck? Finally, it's about 7am and I decided that enough is enough and I get up to go out and check what's happening and have a big breakfast and then continue on to my office without anything weird happening. But I've always wondered what happened that night. Was I actually being followed or what? I was helping a friend move and I needed to drive quite a long way for this. I'm somebody who didn't have that much of an issue with driving long distances because it was something I actually done for my job and I had quite a lot of room in the back of my truck so it was a relatively easy thing for me to do. Now driving at night wasn't always something I was necessarily confident with however. I was aware of the dangers of the roads and nodding off so I made sure that I always had a really good supply of coffee and everything. Now at this point in my life things were going pretty good but not really perfect and I felt like it was lacking in a couple of areas and there was a number of things that I wanted to change and I was a little bit confused about so I thought maybe by going on this trip I was going to kind of clear my head up in the journey and find enlightenment or something. So I set out for this particular trip relatively early and it was quite a good thing. I'm able to miss a lot of traffic this way where people are already at work and I'm probably going to miss the people that are coming out of work too because I'm getting away from the big city now and I had no issue with this. I managed to make ground pretty good and I was feeling fairly confident. After making some pretty good progress I saw a gas station that I decided I was going to pull over to. So I start to fill up with gas and I realised that the person in there is kind of looking at me funny. I don't know why but they were just sort of staring at me giving me the old side eye and I thought oh boy this is great. I'm going to have problems now when I go in there. Sighing I can finish filling up my truck then head in. I say hey how's it going and he says sorry you can't fill up that truck. You can only fill up buildings and starts bursting out laughing. Now, I don't know if this is the worst attempt of a joke that I've heard for a long time or what, but it was pretty weird. And the way he was laughing was almost like hysterically. I handed over the money and he said, yeah, I'm going to get the change in the back and headed out. I said, no, no, it's fine, it's fine and started to leave when he says, hey, don't leave. And I quickly get back in my truck and leave. I was actually worried that I hadn't filled up with fuel at this point and maybe it was just water or something stupid and he was trying to trap me there but this was the first thing that was odd. You know it wasn't one of those mainstream ones, it was like a franchise thing but it looked really dodgy. I suppose it wasn't a good time to stop or place but I needed to. 
So yeah, fueled up and ready to go, I continue on my journey now. After a good number of hours, it's starting to get pretty late, and I'm actually off of the main roads taking some back roads. I do this for a little while, and I don't see any other cars, until eventually one shows up. It's kind of half trailing behind me, but just keeping out of sight, so it's quite different than anything I've ever experienced before. It kind of looks like how I guess you'd imagine an undercover cop car following another, but it wasn't a cop car. It was a really old rickety thing, and I couldn't really see much of it, just other than the fact it was a bit rusty. It didn't even have good headlights, it was that bad. Now, I started to go a bit slower so it could overtake me, but it just held right back. Now again, I go even slower hoping that this thing won't follow me, but it still held back. I now resorted to pulling over to the side of the road, putting my hand out the window and waving them forward. I waited and waited for probably a good 10 minutes or so expecting them to pass but nothing happened. I think this is extremely bizarre and start the car again and head on out. Not actually sure where they've gone, I just presumed that they'd stopped for some random reason or headed back which would be weird regardless but there's not really too many other things I could have imagined it being. Now pretty keen to get off of the dirt roads I start to pick up the pace a little bit and occasionally have to put my main beams on because it's quite dark here. But of course it's not too great for your car battery to do so all the time but I didn't have much of a choice. I even nearly ran over some animal but managed to stop in time. But eventually I make it back to civilization and I think that's the last I'm going to see of them whoever it was. Now at this point I'm starting to run low on gas again. I'm pretty convinced whatever I filled up with before was somehow diluted and that I'd kind of been scammed a bit. But I got further away from them and that made me feel good so I wasn't going to complain too much. Now as I'm driving I can see another gas station up ahead. Now if the other one wasn't the best this one that I was looking at right here made that look like the Ritz Hotel. It was really bad. But again, faced with not much of a choice, I had to go in there. I made a note to myself that I had to plan these trips a bit better around getting the correct fuel. Because I can't keep doing this. And I didn't know how many more times this was going to happen on the trip. I can see there's no other cars around, but they do have a light on. A single light. I began filling up with the fuel and the same thing happened weirdly as before. I'm kind of just getting the feeling that I'm being stared at and I look and once again somebody looking like they've just come out of a horror show is staring at me. They're quite big and menacing and clearly missing teeth just side eyeing me. They're trying not to make it obvious but it kind of looks like when a dog's glancing at you when you're eating food and you look here and it looks away. Yeah, it's pretty weird. And then, I notice a car stops next to me. Now they slow completely down and there's a bunch of people staring at me that I can't make out too well. They kind of just give me a dirty look and I just look back at them confused and they drive off. I think, God, I really am in the middle of nowhere now. These people really want to make me feel like I'm not welcome here. And I reluctantly head inside to go and pay for the gas. Now, I had exact change with me, so I was pretty happy that I didn't have to wait around. I get in there and he just stares at me. I say hey, and he says hey back in a low voice like he's completely detached. I then realise that I really need to pee suddenly, and I quickly ask the guy if I can use the restroom. He says yeah, yeah, that's fine, it's just in the back there. And I head over. Now this restroom is extremely dark and in horrible condition. There's only one cubicle thing and a small window near it. There's one light too and if you close the door to the toilet it kind of blocks out the light but that was the least of my concerns. I head in and relieve myself and go to leave when I realise the door's stuck. I think god is everything going to go wrong today? kind of punched on it a bit and pushed it but it would not budge and that's when I realized something was wrong. The lock didn't actually go on properly. I say hey can you help 
I'm stuck here, and that's when I hear the sounds of footsteps. And I can hear breathing. And it's not just the sounds of one person, it's the sounds of multiple people. I kind of go down and I can see at least five or six feet all surrounding the cubicle. And clearly somebody's leaned up against the door. I bite my hand trying not to scream as I try and figure out an escape plan. I realise that I have to pretend that I'm going along with it and say hey, I'm going to try and open the door again, just wait. I slowly tiptoe onto the toilet then and I try and think of options how to escape. I start putting my own force on the door and pretend that I'm trying to budge it open when I realise my only escape is through that little toilet window. The thing is, I don't know whether I'm going to fit through it, but I don't really have much of a choice. I say, hey, get back, I'm going to kick the door now if anybody's there. And I start pretending to fud on the door. While doing that, I slowly climb up to the window, and within probably less than a second, I manage to kick the window open and quickly slide out. I ended up leaving my jacket there in the process, but that was the least of my concerns. I hop down and immediately start sprinting. I'm not looking behind myself, I'm just completely engrossed with trying to get out of there. I sprint probably for another 10 seconds and make it to my truck. I quickly get in, find the keys as quick as I can and start the engine and literally floor it out of there. I had one second to look behind and I can see that whoever was in the till had now moved outside and was near the tree line. I drove at absolute top speed pretty much for probably a good 20 minutes and I burnt through so much fuel but I didn't care. I was so tired and just ready to get over to the friend's house that I didn't stop driving until I eventually reached it with the fuel gauge basically on empty. When I arrived I ended up falling asleep immediately and I woke up the next day feeling absolutely exhausted. I started telling my friend about what had happened and he said yeah there's some really weird people out there you've got to be careful. I asked him if he ever heard of anything similar and apparently people disappear along that stretch of road all the time. I eventually completed the move with him and I drove back a complete different way which actually added a whole day to the journey but I was never going to chance going back there again. Now I've always wanted to try the car life thing after watching so many people who have done it before traveling around the country and I lived in Fort Lauderdale for five years and thought I would be stuck there and that was it. Then the pandemic hit and I checked my bank account and I was back paid thousands. Before I know it I'm packing up all of my stuff and the landlord said I could leave all my furniture that was there and that's fine. I'm now on 95 heading north laughing and actually leaving and couldn't believe it. I managed to get a hang of the whole car life thing and it seemed somewhat normal and comfortable being able to stealth park in different locations without detection. I had not done any off the grid stuff yet but was more comfortable by the time I reached the lake, Tahoe. I was hiking and asked some guy with his dog who's local if I could sleep in my car because Tahoe seems tricky. He said that there was a place up the mountains called Hope Valley. It sounded good so off I went. Now Lake Tahoe is already very high in altitude so it was a few thousand feet higher than that. And it was past July. As I reached the area I saw a small parking lot that was an entrance to a wildlife nature preserve. It was closed and empty so that would do. I'm all settled in with my blanket and the sun setting and the temperatures plummeting. Before I know it, it's pitch black and zero visibility. I start to hear wolves howling and at this point I'm game. This was the experience I wanted. It was a little creepy but I was fine. I was living what I would normally be watching on the internet. But before the sun went down, I noticed there were garbage cans that were overfilled 15 feet from the car entrance at the preserve. Finally, I drifted off asleep 
and was awakened by something at 3am. You couldn't see anything. Anyway, it was so dark, but I overheard the footsteps, heavy ones, right outside the door. At this point, I'm really worried. Then something brushes up against the car, and I'm scared as I don't know what to do. I wait for a couple of minutes, then I open the door. I run around the car as fast as possible to the driver's side. Drove down the mountain and slept in a Motel 7 parking lot like a baby. Never made it through my first and only off the grid camping adventure and I won't forget it. The only other time that something creepy happened was up in Mount Thashta. I drove halfway up the mountain, parked on the side of the road and got out and started walking into this trail. I made it about 70 yards in and I hear a low growl. I've never ran so fast in my life. The rest of the trip was the best I ever did in Montana. Now English isn't my first language, so sorry in advance if this doesn't read too well. Now I'd been working on a farm throughout the summer. I'd actually been living on site pretty much to save money, and because my truck was quite big. Now I was very excited to get back home. The particular day come when I set off and I said goodbye to the people I was working with because I knew I probably wouldn't see them again because soon I'd be going to attend college and I was excited for that. Up ahead of me was a long long drive and I was really looking forward to it so I say my goodbyes and I set off. Now when I begin to drive it's raining quite heavily and I actually think it was really nice to be honest. I couldn't see too far off ahead of me, but it meant that I was in a nice peaceful area where I could really be away from everyone. It took me about a good 5 minutes of driving before I eventually get out into the main roads. Now the main roads are nice and there's not really many other cars around. I'd see the other occasional ones, but the closer it got to dark, the fewer and fewer they would become. There was quite a lot of houses around where I was driving, but not too many because I was getting closer and closer to the forest and obviously when you're there there's not as many houses because there's not as much space for them. I eventually make a turn and finally enter the forest and it's really beautiful. There's the odd bus station that I pass but not really much of anything. I'm not driving too quick at this time because it's still pretty wet where I am so I just have to be cautious and just let my mind drift off. I'm kind of more focused on what I'm going to do next and what my next steps are because obviously I'm excited to go studying and it's a science degree so it's going to be pretty involved and it should open lots of opportunities for me to study wherever I want afterwards too and get the jobs I want. Now every couple of meters I realise that the trees seem to be getting more and more dense and it's really nice. I guess it's basically me going deeper and deeper into the mountainy areas. Now I'm doing this for quite a while until eventually I reach some snow. Now again it was raining and the snow was just off at the side of the road but it's really beautiful. I'm actually somebody who absolutely adores the snow and I always find it exciting to be out in it, just not if I'm driving, especially because where I am too I'm grateful that it's not on the road because if I go off the edge I'm pretty much dead. It's hard to describe but around some of these bends the road literally is almost a sheer drop. Even some of the trees are sideways and they've just kind of adapted to it. But being a measly human I wasn't adapted so well so if I got into a car wreck here you probably wouldn't be hearing me writing this story now. But thankfully I didn't. Now some of my friends asked me if I saw any animals while on this trip, and not really to be honest. We do get deers and those kind of animals, but around here there wasn't much of anything. I guess they just stay away from the roads and it's really a good thing. Now as I'm driving I can now see the mountains and it's really beautiful. I'm actually driving more in the middle of the road now because I can see there's no other cars in front of me and it's actually safer. If you're going around tight bends like this and you know you're on your own, you don't really want to be on the absolute edge, because obviously you don't want to be chancing it going off the side. Now I do this for a while until I encounter another car up ahead, 
This one looks really beat up, but I think no issue. It seems to be driving painfully slow at first, so I slowly at the next opportunity overtake it carefully on a wooden bridge. Now as I'm driving I've realised that it has its hazards on, and I stop to I quickly fling mine on and I think, god I wouldn't want to be stuck out here on my own. The other issue too is there's not really good reception here, so it can be quite a big issue if you need to get into contact with others for more help. Now I can't really see much because most of the windows are blacked out, but I can just see a hand come down. What's strange is they're wearing quite big gloves, which you wouldn't really want to drive in. I mean I wouldn't, and they just point forward as though I should keep going. I just wave goodbye and do a friendly beef with the horn and continue on my way. I didn't think much of them, but I do remember taking a couple of seconds to look in my mirror as I slowly go around the corner and they disappear amongst the rain and mist. Not thinking much of it, I continue on my journey. I didn't have too much further to go before I could get to the first stop on my trip. There were some cabins that had basically been converted into little, I guess you call them motels, but places where you can just pay to stay for a couple of nights. Maybe hotel, I don't know how you guys differentiate it. But I pull up into the first one that I paid for, and all is good. I enter the code that I've been sent, and I go in. This place is absolutely lovely, and I was really looking forward to my rest. I've been on the road for a while now, and I think it's important to take lots of breaks, especially when you're on dangerous roads like this. So now, with everything going well, I make myself a coffee and start watching some TV. To be honest, the shows are absolutely terrible, and I get so bored I just idly watch the news until I decide that I need to do something more exciting, and I head out. I didn't go far, I just had a general walk around and tried to appreciate some of the scenery, but the rain was picking up quite a lot now. I turned to go back in when I realised something odd. There's a car parked up the road that I didn't notice before. It's just past the bridge, and it looks almost identical to the one that I'd seen before. In fact, I'm certain it is, but I didn't take a chance to check the registration plate. So I strain my eyes and try and notice it, but I realise I don't have one. I think maybe it's just some old beat up car, somebody's abandoned there. I had decided that I should just head back in and not think too much of it. So I eventually drift off watching the boring news and wake up again and I'm pretty happy. I make sure everything's nice and tidy and I get back in my truck and continue on my way. It's still raining now, just not as bad as before. And as I pull onto the road, I glance behind myself and I see that there's no other car there now. So I think it's odd, I think maybe some of the scrap people wanted to do something with it and just left it there, but I don't know. I'm not really worried about it, more of my journey. So once again, I'm on the roads and the trees are actually more bright now, and I'm kind of in more of a loggers area at this point. I now make it into another, more densely wooded area, and the rain's really picked up, and it's actually quite hard to see now. It's the kind of rain that if you stood outside with the wind would actually really hurt your eyes, and is quite annoying. But, all it means is I have to drive a bit more slow, but it really makes it immersive with your surroundings. It almost feels like you're in an infinite loop almost, you know like in video games where the map hasn't loaded properly in the background. It's sort of similar to that. But again, I just adjust my driving style and continue on. I haven't really got much of a reason to stop, and every so often I can see where the loggers have done their work and it looks beautiful. I eventually make it back into another wooded area, which is more like where I was before, and the rain slowly stops, which I'm actually quite grateful for. You know, some people don't really adjust to the rain as well as I do, and they just drive like everything's normal, and for me that's a pretty dangerous thing really. I always think the biggest danger when you're driving is kind of other drivers because some people honestly do really stupid things, but I guess that's not something that's going to change anytime soon, and it's pretty out of my control really, so I don't like to complain about it too much. 
Now I make it to an area where I guess that the rain clouds have stopped and it's actually bone dry almost. You get the odd mossy tree and whatnot, but there's already too much there. But it's actually nicer than what I was driving in before, so again I'm grateful for it. And I'm coming up to my second rest area. Now this area is actually quite good and it's more of a modern building than a cabin. There's a few other people there too. I say hello and go into my room and everything's normal basically at this point. I realise that again there's not even anything to watch on TV. Not being able to bear watching the news idly, I just decide to go for a walk in the forest nearby. There's actually a trail path which is quite nice so I head off into here. Now as I set off, I realise that there's not many people around here. I know there's an odd bus that can come up this kind of hill thing but I haven't seen one since the whole time that I've been in this area. And I do think this is odd, but again I don't really live in a densely populated area so again this is kind of to be expected. I have some water with me and I'm just carrying this in one hand while on my phone in the other. I don't really know where I'm going but I have a rough idea and luckily my map service is working well. And I go to an area that's supposed to have a nice view but there really isn't anything there. While walking, I stop to see if anybody's around and I do notice one person. Strangely, they were walking and stopped the moment that I turned around and just kind of stood there perfectly still. They were wearing a big raincoat and I couldn't really see much else but they kind of slowly gone behind a tree but extremely slowly like I don't know whether this was actually a person or not. It was pretty bizarre but I don't think too much of it deciding to continue on the loop to get back to where I'm staying and I get back and just set a whim for the night and nothing odd really happens here. End up waking up and getting in my truck again for the final leg of where I need to go. Now while I'm in my truck everything's as it should be so I'm relatively content. I do notice a strange smell similar to gasoline but I'm pretty convinced it's coming from one of the other cars in the lot here and I set off on my way. Now annoyingly my phone decides to take me on a detour which is guiding me the rest of the way home and it takes me through another forest. Now this forest is not too heavily populated by that I mean pretty much nobody here. There's kind of a path which goes through the middle of it, but it's not really the best built one. It's kind of like gravelly, but you know when the middle part of it's smooth and the sides are like little rocks or stones or whatever you call it? It's like that. And every so often I have to completely go onto the other side of this road to avoid trees which are half fallen. Nobody ever comes to really service the road clearly, and it's not the kind of place that you want to stop again. It's one of those where if you go off the side of the road, most of it's into little crevasses or I don't know how you say it, but those things that you can just drop your car into and not come out of again. Kind of like in Jurassic Park maybe. But yeah, it's not really the best of conditions. And while you're driving, you actually kick up quite a lot of dust behind you. So it actually becomes quite difficult to see if anybody's approaching behind you. And the other issue I realise this will create is if another car is coming, all you're going to see is a big dust cloud ahead of you and just have to stop and hope they don't hit you. I was prepared though, I'd turn on my lights in the event of this happening, but it didn't. I go further and further, and I finally see a car park. Now, to my absolute surprise, I see that same car once again. The beat up one I'd seen before without a registration plate on it, which I do think is extremely bizarre but I just convinced myself that this place is quite small and they're probably just going the same way that I am and don't think too much of it. Deciding now that it's probably a good time to get out of the forest, I actually step on it a little bit. That's when I realised something strange. I don't seem to be getting any closer to the destination that I thought I was. It's almost like I've been going in a big circle, which is bizarre. I check my phone again, and I can't seem to get any signal, which is really annoying. I ended up pulling over at the side of the road, and I notice a new dilemma. 
I'm pretty much out of fuel, which is really strange because I was convinced I had a full tank the night before almost, having recently filled it up, but now there wasn't anything there. Something else strange? One of my back tyres is out, which again was fine. I did look for a sign of a puncture, but I couldn't see anything, and I think, wow, this is really good. The thing was, I wasn't that far away from completing my journey, and I was half tempted to try and limp it. I mean, if I had the fuel, I would, and if it was only the bad tyre, but this wasn't the case. So, what I do now is I try and make some calls, but again, I get no signal. It's starting to get dark now, and I realise that I probably need to get some sleep in. Annoyingly, I'm just kind of pulled over to the side of the road, so I decide to get back in my truck and try and take it further off the main road, because I don't really want a car to come speeding down here and hit me not seeing me, because obviously when I'm sleeping I won't have the lights on. So this is what I do, and I settle in. I had enough water and stuff like that, but it wasn't necessarily going to be comfortable because I had to recline the seat and just lay my clothes over me to stay nice and warm at night. It wasn't actually cold outside, which is really important, but it wasn't really comfortable sleeping. I realised I had to keep moving onto my side or I didn't feel very good. I'm one of those people where unless I sleep on a comfortable bed, I really have muscle and bone aches the next day. I start watching a show on my phone though, and Again, that runs out, and without signal I can't load new ones. All of my downloaded ones had been watched before, so I decide to try and sleep. Now, I managed to sleep for about probably two hours, and then I'm woken again by sunlight. Now, as I start to slowly open my eyes, I can see a beautiful goldish glow everywhere, and I think this is a sunset that I actually want to appreciate. So I try and take myself wake up a bit more. Then I realise how warm it is too and I can't wait to get outside. I don't really wake up too quickly and quickly down my water in an attempt to wake up quicker. And that's when I notice something odd. There is a distinct smell of burning and it doesn't seem to be coming from very far away. I now sit up completely and look around, and through my blurry eyes, I can see something awfully wrong. There's fire, and it's in all directions around me. Now, I don't know what caused the fire or how big it is, but it looks like I'm in the middle of a forest fire. I let out a really loud yelp, and I quickly unlock my car doors and open the door, and I kid you not, there are flames all around me. Absolutely petrified and not knowing what to do, I quickly grab the remainder of my water and throw it towards the edge of the fire, where that I think I can see an opening. And thank god it actually worked. I jump through this gap and quickly sprint about another 20 meters before checking if there's anything on me on fire. That's when I notice a second strange thing. The fire only seems to be coming from my truck. Literally. The rest of the woods are completely fine, but it's just this specific area. Panicking, I sprint forward and sprint backwards, trying to see where else the fire is and what way I need to flee. But I realise now that it's literally only coming from a circle around my truck. Now, what's worse is I don't have my phone, but I just accept it's gone. And I look on as I see that my truck starts to set on fire. This was an old truck, but it's one that I absolutely love, so I'm actually quite disappointed to see this. That's when I noticed something else odd. Just in the distance, I can see the silhouette of a person once more. Now it's hard to see through the flames, but I'm absolutely certain that somebody was watching from behind a tree. As my eyes adjust, I can then see a disgusting, teethy smile coming back at me. And the next thing I knew, I was sprinting in the other direction. Now, I can't say for certain that this person tried to kill me in there, but it seems really bizarre. The more I'm thinking of it while jogging, the more that I have fuel to continue running. Now, I probably ran for about a good 25 minutes, 
and luckily there's no other fires around me. Occasionally I peer over my shoulder to try and see if anybody's following me, but luckily there's no one. I don't know where I'm running and I'm literally getting ready for woodland survival now. I have a basic idea of what I need to do, but I realise that the sun's starting to rise. The true sunrise, not the false one which I was mistaken by before. And I know that I have to try and hike my way out of here as my only escape method. I begin doing so, and I soon realise that I'm not that far from an actual road. I quickly cut through the forest as quick as I can and eventually make it out to here. I've managed to catch my breath while walking, and I try desperately to flag down a car. Annoyingly, the first two just go straight past me, then eventually another one comes and I'm able to flag them down. I say, please can you help me, something's happened to my car and I really need to make a call to the police. Luckily this stranger was absolutely understanding and honestly like an angel, offering to drive me over to the police station. I start explaining briefly what happened and they can see by the fear in my face that I'm not lying to them. And I get to the station and thank them profusely. I then go in to make a police report and I drink a hot chocolate which was really well needed. I'm actually super tired now and once I've made my statement the police say that they're quickly going to send someone over there. They were very accommodating and actually let me sleep in a room they had there and I basically knocked out. I think it's from the adrenaline dump of everything that made me especially tired but I remembered waking up to a knock on the door and they say, hey, I've got some good and bad news. The good news is we found exactly where you said, but the bad news is we've got no truck and no idea how this could have happened. They tell me that they're going to investigate and give me a reference number, and I then get offered to have a ride home the rest of the way, which I gratefully take. I eventually make it back to my actual home and I don't know what to think. I go indoors, put the keys down and put my little reference number down that's written on paper and I just lay on the bed. Now, paranoid, I immediately jump up at the first sound of a car looking for the silvery colour one I'd seen before, multiple times, suddenly connecting more dots. Maybe that car that I'd seen so conveniently at the same places of me wasn't by coincidence, maybe it was somebody following me. Now, I don't want to point the finger too much, but if what I'm thinking is true, this person had literally tried to murder me out in the woods for god knows what reason and had purposefully cut the fuel in my tank and messed up a tyre waiting for this to happen. Now, if this is the case, it must have been somebody who knew the area very well, or at least where I was going, and that's what really scares me. Eventually, I called the police line again, and every time I have since, they tell me that they haven't found any other leads. I know by now the case will be closed because nobody was actually hurt, and I know that I'm never going to get that truck back again, but I'm kind of left with more questions than answers.